Hello dear viewers, thank you for choosing the Manwa compilation channel. Please leave feedback in the comments after watching, enjoy watching. He was surrounded on all sides by cultivators of the highest levels. All the elements of nature came to this place in order to destroy one of them. Finally, they began to administer justice. You have done a lot of evil, you are a disgrace to the cultivators. Today we will destroy the demon and restore harmony to the pantheon of gods, one of them began. That's right, Zhang Qingtian. You are surrounded by ten celestials and ten immortals. You can't escape. Know your place and give us the Holy Book of Transfiguration, and we will give you a chance to end it all. Another man in armor continued after the first. However, their threats were like a mouse squeaking to our hero and he laughed in their faces. Like this, demon slayer cultivators. You have been plotting for a long time to trick me into coming here. Zhang Qingtian has killed many people in my life. But I have a clear conscience and have never killed innocents. All who died from my sword were treacherous and evil. But you are so prudent and moral. You immortal cultivators are clearly afraid of me. Because I am talented in cultivation. And that is why I have been called a demon. Our hero answered them. And there is no way he can compare with them in shamelessness. Even at the cost of his life. Demon Kintian, don't argue. Give us the sacred book of transfiguration. Otherwise, I will make you taste the fiery hell where you will suffer day and night. Give it back. The Wind Lord insisted on his cultivator. But to their great regret and sadness, the sacred book of transfiguration merged into one single hole in Zhang's body. Having heard such sad news, the cultivators and immortals made their unanimous verdict. Take the life of the enemy. They knew that our hero had many different tricks, and in order to prevent unforeseen situations, they should have attacked altogether, and therefore, as if on cue, they attacked Qingtian at once. But since they called him a demon, he decided to finish the job as a demon. Since they want to kill him today, he has no choice but to use the Holy Book of Transfiguration. And he uses them to open the way. Just one fighting stance, one wave of the index finger, and destructive energy that can only be compared to the power of an atomic bomb poured out. This demonic shock technique! Be careful, run away! Realizing what was going on, the Lord of the Winds shouted to the others. Hearing his warning, everyone rushed away from this terrible place. It's too late. The demonic shock technique is the creation of complete chaos. The one who uses it will die, but also the one who gave birth to it. Don't resist here and enjoy your last moments. Our hero laughed. Cultivators and immortals did not believe that Zhang could actually be so cruel to them. They called to each other, encouraging each other, and claiming that they were obliged to kill the Chintian demon so that he could not use all his powers. But soon, there was no trace of them left. Music flowed loudly through the speakers, and the liner itself, as if under a guiding star, cut through the waves at the speed of an arrow. Hiding from the scorching sun under the shade of an umbrella, Chintian lay leaning on his hands on the table. Suddenly he started up, not understanding what had happened, because he was supposed to die. Rising from the bench with a jerk, he began to examine himself. Everything was clear, he was reborn. Even his ash-blonde hair and yellow owl eyes had not changed. The only difference being that his hair was now cut short. The story of our hero is quite fascinating. His name is Zhang Qintian, the famous demon of the celestial world. It took him 500 years to ascend to the pinnacle of immortality. He passed through heaven and earth and his sword slew the inhabitants of the whole world. Wherever he went, everyone obeyed him, bowed at his feet in order to delay their death. But to his regret, the heavenly cultivators were afraid of him and set up ten destructive seals to surround him and destroy him, as well as seize the sacred book of transfiguration. But none of them knew that the holy book of transfiguration had long since merged with him. Once his cultivation path was interrupted, he used the power of the heavenly cultivators to open up a second path of life for himself. Okay, since I was reborn, I should become stronger than in my previous life. Our hero promised himself, grabbing the handrail and taking a deep breath of sea air. No matter what, sooner or later, he will return to the realm of the celestials and use their blood to extinguish the flame of anger in his heart. What added to his steadfastness and confidence was the fact that his beautiful beloved Ruoyun remained in the depths of the palace of the Celestials as a hostage. But then his train of thought was interrupted. I allowed you to serve Hu Xiao. Who gave you permission to mess around? Come back quickly, a man shouted turning to him. Turning around, our hero recalled the last years of his life. At 20 years old, five centuries ago, Hu Tanhua organized a cruise party with Zhang as a servant. Our hero never thought that he would be transported to the very day when in the past he committed suicide. 
Hu Tanhua was a cruel and arrogant man, who not only stole the Chintian girl in the past, but also framed him into taking on a debt of several million. His father had to sell all his property and ask for help to pay off his debts. He ended up getting lung cancer and couldn't pay for his treatment. He didn't even have money to pay for his own housing, and he rented a barn. One winter night, my father died in this barn from a draft. For the next few years, Hu Tanhua did not let our hero out of the small mine where he mined ore for days on end, cried bitterly. And then at this cruise party, he jumped into the sea and committed suicide, thus ending your life full of suffering and failure. But who knew that fate had other plans for him? The young man not only did not die, but thanks to his luck he ended up on the ancient continent of the Celestials. Ching Tian ascended and achieved the status of Supreme Demon by defeating countless talented cultivators. Under his feet were 18 circles of hell, and above his head were 30 circles of heaven. He supported the sky like a mountain, and unlike his previous life where he was reviled and humiliated, in his new life the whole world was afraid of him. But this is in the future. And now Hu Xiao hurried to the young man with complaints about why when they talk to him, he does not respond. Okay, I'll go. Our hero clenched his hands into fists and went to serve. Since he was already reborn, he decided to repay the debt with blood. And now everyone will be able to fully feel his wrath. It's no surprise that your girlfriend is cheating on you, Zhang said, looking after him. Only now it seemed to him as if the young man was not the same as before. Chintian went down to the deck, after which he went to one of the VIP rooms on the liner. Having wandered through the crowd of rich and respected youth, he saw his former lover in the arms of Tan Hua, happily drinking wine. In the past, Xiaoren was Zhang's classmate. Two years later they fell in love, and the young man did everything for her to satisfy her vanity. He lived modestly and worked the dirtiest jobs to cover all her expenses. Qing Tian loved her with all his soul, but all efforts were trampled into the dirt. And when she got involved with Hu Tan Hua, she completely changed her feelings for him. Seeing our hero, the couple tensely watched as he approached them with a confident gait. Xiao Ran was a beauty with brown hair and eyes as blue as the sky. At this party, she wore a red dress with a deep neckline, and her delicate neck was decorated with a precious pendant that matched the color of the dress. Well, her new boyfriend was much more generous than her ex could afford. Tan Hua was also dressed like a brand. Only his varnished hair gave his image a cheap look. Darling, you came just in time. I officially declare that your girlfriend Xiaoren is now mine. Raising his voice and raising his glass for all to hear, the upstart said, and confirming his words, he grabbed Xiaoren by the waist and drank red wine from a glass in one gulp. A poor man like you is not worthy of such a girl, he continued to mock. He also added that if he had lived like our hero, he would have fallen into the ground a long time ago from shame. Such a performance did not go unnoticed by others. Watching what was happening, they laughed at the young man because he was not from a rich family. But Ching Tian has already lived two lives, has seen all the vanity of the world, and his heart is like a calm lake. It is impossible to stir up waves in him. He clearly saw how the enemy wanted to anger him with insults and humiliations, forcing him to become a laughing stock. Why is he so calm? It should not be! Tan Hua thought, falling silent for a second and looking into the eyes of the young man standing opposite him. Xiao Ran, I'm giving you one last chance. It's not too late to think of it. Everything between us will remain as before. Our hero gave the girl a chance. Of course, he no longer loved her, but simply wanted to use her as his instrument of revenge. A bag was heard from all sides. And the kid's guts are not thin, he's as if he'd been kicked on the head by a donkey, the guests whispered. Second chance for Xiaoran? Does he think he's right for her? Others chuckled. But they were all interested in how Ching Tian dared to say such a thing. How dare you ignore Mr. Hu? Again made a claim to our hero Xiao. But the young man was silent, and his indifference infuriated the man even more. With curses, he approached Ching Tian and swung his hand. But Zhang beat him to it and struck first. There was so much power in his hand that Xiao's two teeth flew out, and his jaw became dislocated. And the man, having lost his balance, flew back and falling, pushed several set tables. Needless to say, those around did not expect such a turn of events, and, frozen in place, silently watched what was happening. But soon the shock began to wear off and the hall was filled with screams. What are you doing? How dare you hit him? Xiaoran attacked her ex-boyfriend with accusations. Why does he behave this way and look so different from himself? Previously, when Tan Hua saw me, he couldn't find a place for himself. Wasn't he broken? How does he manage to remain so indifferent to me now? She began to be jealous. For a minute, they silently looked into each other's eyes. 
All the eyes of those present in the VIP room were turned to them. Well, it looks like you don't want to come back. I hope you won't regret this, and you won't have to get on your knees and beg me. Chintian finally summed up. In the past, he was madly in love with the girl standing in front of him, and gave all of himself to her. But she let him down. However, this time, in this life, he was reborn as an immortal, and therefore wanted to have fun. The behavior of our hero seriously angered Tanhua. He was so tense that he clenched his fists, forgetting about the glass he was holding, and the wine spilled onto the marble floor. Unfortunate, you hit my man and still dare to be insolent? On your knees and ask for forgiveness, otherwise I will throw you into the sea to feed the fish, he threatened. If he had been in a calm state, perhaps such an idea would not have occurred to him, but now his mind was clouded with hatred. Chang, you went too far. I couldn't even think that you were such a rude person. Xiaoren supported her boyfriend. After her words, our hero finally believed in her greed. How impudent and reckless Xiaoran should have left you long ago. On your knees and ask Tanhua for forgiveness, you ragamuffin. How dare you compete with him? Her best friend Li Lili supported Xiaoran. I agree. Even your boyfriend is a hundred times better than this rogue. Their third mutual friend agreed with her. She didn't understand at all who let Qingtian and clothes from the market into the liner party. Okay, he and I were classmates. I think he didn't want to beat that man. Besides, Xiao started it first. A former classmate stood up for our hero. Despite the timidity and trembling in her body, she tried to calm it down. Her name was An Yunuo, and she was always attentive and kind to Qingtian. Of all my classmates, she was the only one who treated me well. Besides, in a past life we were very close to her. I knew that Yunuo treated me in a special way. It's a pity that I didn't understand this in time, being blinded by Xiaoran. Who knows, maybe my life would have turned in a different direction then, Zhang thought. But few people heard the girl's words. Meanwhile, brothers began to gather behind Tanhua, ready to help him if necessary. You hit my man and you think everything is okay? Dream! I give you one last chance on your knees, otherwise I will feed you to the fish! He repeated his conditions. Even the director of the educational department present at the party decided to call on our hero to apologize. At the same time, threatening that if he does not do this, then serious consequences await him. And Xiaoran didn't even feel sorry for her ex. Her logic was simple. In the real world, the rich like Hu Tan Hua rule, and Qin Tian was too ordinary, too poor, and could only be isolated. And most of all, the girl was glad that she had made the right choice in her life in favor of Tan Hua. He will not receive my apology, on the contrary, he will experience all the wrath of heaven our hero announced publicly. Hearing him, Tanhua burst into loud laughter throughout the entire hall. You ragamuffin aren't afraid to scratch your tongue and show me the wrath of heaven? Chen Huang said, pointing his finger at Zhang's chest. Our hero swallowed contentedly. Okay, then listen carefully. I'm sorry. He said and quietly made a magical turn of his hands and a couple of movements with his fingers. From the outside it seemed as if he was nervous and snapping his fingers. But as soon as the young man's hand calmed down, an electric discharge passed through Tianhua's body. His hair became electrified, his heart pulse raced, and he lost consciousness. The boys of Xiaoran's best friends barely had time to catch him. Where did the lightning come from here? Mr. Hu, are you okay? Those around him became worried, but this was only the beginning of the torment that our hero had prepared for Tianhua. And a moment later, the upstart's body began to convulse again. It was as if hundreds of hot needles were being pierced into all the cells of his body, causing unimaginable pain and making him scream until his throat was hoarse. Finally, Zhang thoroughly enjoyed the torment of his victim. What are you waiting for? Take the gentleman to the hospital immediately. Bullion got his bearings. He also ordered that someone report to the captain so that he rushed to the shore. And Hu Tanhua, who was thrown onto his back by one of his guys, surrounded by servants, and Xiaoren left the VIP room amid loud groans. Suddenly, someone pulled our hero's hand. The young man turned around and saw Anyunuo behind him. Be careful with Tanhua, he won't take his eyes off you until he takes revenge. He also has a lot of connections, so don't fight him alone, otherwise you'll lose, the girl advised. From her expression, Qingtian realized that she was really worried about him, and it reminded him of his school days. Well, thank you, I'll remember, he thanked. And turning around, he went to look for a secluded place so as not to appear in front of anyone before going ashore. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, the grass was turning green, overall a great, wonderful day. Having caught a taxi, Zhang sat in the back seat, simultaneously showing the driver the way. 
although mostly all the way he was busy with his thoughts. Even though the Book of Heavenly Transfiguration gave him a second life, he had almost completely lost the power of a cultivator from his previous life. Only a trace of the primordial demon Qi remained in his body. The primordial demon was the purest of all other similar Qi demons in the world. In a past life, Zhang came across this power in the ridge of a dead fairy. But it is strange that all the powers evaporated during rebirth. But the demon's energy remained. The cemetery was located outside the city, and therefore the journey seemed long. While they were driving, the sun had already begun to set below the horizon. Please stop here, our hero asked when they drove past the cemetery gates. After which he handed over several bills paying for the service. Young man, wait, don't come out here. This place is unsafe and it will get dark outside very soon, so you won't be able to find transport. The driver became worried, and he offered to wait until the client did the necessary things at the cemetery and then take him back. Don't worry, everything will be fine. Ching Chen answered and opened the door and got out of the car. The driver sighed bitterly. Young people now do not listen to the advice of their elders. If I knew that you were coming here, I wouldn't even agree to take you, he muttered watching as the silhouette of the young man got lost between the monuments and crosses. And he was not worried in vain, because this place had gained notoriety due to the fact that people disappeared and died there every month. And pressing the gas pedal, he hurried to leave this bad place. Meanwhile, our hero, without feeling any fear, walked into the very depths of the cemetery. Now, on his way, rickety crosses and ancient tombstones began to come across more and more often. In a past life, Zhang tried to become immortal, but the world made him a demon. But now the primordial power of the demon Qi will reveal his demonic path, and he will be able to kill and punish all the hypocrites. But the power of the demon Qi must first be activated, and only evil will help him here. There are many different types of Qi. Such types of Qi energy as resentment of spirits and demons bring evil to the world. And the smallest place in Yunzhou is the cemetery on the ground where the young man walked. Previously, battles had taken place there and he did not know how many souls of infidels were buried here. But they will probably be enough to return the power of the original demon Qi. First, our hero's foot stepped on a piece of iron, then again and again. Looking at his feet, the young man saw ritual iron discs, and looking in front of him, he saw something. It turned out that he was not the only one who came to the cemetery today to recuperate. Nine poles with various pendants were stuck into the ground in a circle. And in the center of the circle lay two people a young girl, and an elderly man. They were suffocating and didn't even have the strength to get up. Spirit creation and spirit cultivator? And this is the first thing that came to mind when our hero saw it. But then a man noticed his appearance. Help us, he begged, stretching out a trembling hand in his direction. Well, earlier I was stupid, arrogant, and was reborn into this world without knowing much about the earth. But I didn't expect to see such a spirit here. Jang thought slowly to help. And this meant that the land already had its own specialists. But why, when the young man tried to feel the energy force of the earth with the help of his aura, did it turn out to be so weak? But then measured beats on the drum were heard. Huang Fu, accept it. No one will help you. A hoarse voice was heard from somewhere. Another minute and a gray-haired old man emerged from the crypt that had been disturbed after centuries. Seeing the young man, he raised his eyebrow in displeasure, saying, what does a stranger need in this place at such a late hour? Meanwhile, the man and the girl continued to pray for help. I'm just passing by, don't pay attention, continue. Jang explained, turning his back to the magician and his victims. After all, he came to the cemetery for something completely different, and he was not at all interested in the sacrifice of ordinary people. But the old man did not want to just let the guest go. Well, stop. Do you think my primordial powers will allow you to leave? He shouted at our hero's back. However, his words greatly hurt the young man's pride. Original? Who are you that you call your powers primordial in front of me? Ching Tian turned to the insult and was indignant. How dare you talk to me in a rude tone, puppy? I stopped you because I saw your potential, answered the old man. But since he did not like the young man's bad manners, he decided to teach him a lesson. And putting his hands forward, he summoned two energy dragons with the goal of burning the young man standing six meters from him alive. Run! This is the fire of the spirit! If it touches you, it will burn you to ashes! The man imprisoned in the magic circle shouted with all his might. And our hero only looked at how the spirits in the form of dragons, which looked more like piranhas, moved by inertia towards him. Since the old man couldn't even summon normal spirits, what kind of opponent is he? Grandfather, what is this guy doing? 
He doesn't move. Does he really want to die? The girl shouted and turned to the man. I see the boy is afraid that you won't be able to cope with me, right? And that's why you don't even try to resist. The old man laughed, and controlling the spirits, he lowered his hands. After which, the spirits absorbed the young man with their compacted aura, hiding him from those around him. The victims in the magic circle trembled with fear. He was so young and came to our aid, but fell before the power of Master Chen. We are doomed, the man cried. Apparently he forgot how Jang walked past them a couple of minutes ago without paying attention. Meanwhile, a bag was heard from the blazing blue fire. You gave me time to absorb their ardor created by spirits created from pure power, and it will help me regain the power of the primordial demon Qi. Our hero explained along the way, and began to absorb the energy of spirits. Another moment and he subdued them, forcing them to obey his movements. In a past life, our hero trained in the art of the primordial demon Qi, and also acquired the unknown talent of a majestic demon. He called it the Martial Demon of Heaven technique, which makes it possible to use the gift of the primordial demon Qi without putting in much effort. It was now that he pulled off this trick. Watching what was happening, the old man smiled. But although the corners of his mouth turned up, his eyes and forehead remained the same frown. Boy, I've been improving my skills in creating fire spirits for hundreds of years. The flame will not go out until you turn into a pile of ashes and know that your suffering only intensifies its flame. He hastened to explain. But to spite him, the consequences were different from his assumption. Now, even when Zhang breathed and the fire entered his lungs, it did not cause him any harm. Being in harmony with himself and the world around him, he created the core of the primordial demon Qi. And having manifested it, he consumed the spirit, absorbing the flame with every cell of the body. And with a calm face he watched as the last flames died out in his palm. The old man stared in amazement at the smoke rising to the sky. Where is my flame that I have practiced for so many years? Realizing the full depth of the situation and misunderstanding, he began to shout. But Qing Tian did not listen to his indignation, trying to concentrate and concentrate on himself and his feelings. Another moment and a three-headed six-armed monster appeared behind him, whose eyes glowed with red light and whose roar made the earth shake. Needless to say, this vision was not a hallucination, and our hero really summoned such a monstrous monster. At the sight of the monster, the old man's legs became weak, and he, unable to control his own body, fell to his knees. I can't stand on my feet. What is this fear? He thought. However, his instinct told him that if he wanted to live, then he should submit. And he bowed his head in fear before the young man. How dare you attack me? You have committed an unforgivable sin. Our hero was indignant looking at the trembling old man. This terrifying pressure suddenly disappeared. Maybe it was just my imagination? Feeling light, the old man thought, slowly getting to his feet. Guy, what the hell did you just do? He shouted, demanding an explanation. And having come to the wrong conclusion that the young man was only using hypnosis, he decided to eat his soul as punishment. He understood that he was facing a rather strong opponent, and therefore decided to sacrifice part of himself to defeat Jang. And in one jump I was next to him. But our hero was not a failure and, having created a core of absorbing furious flame, repelled the attack. And the old man flew to the side with a shockwave, painfully hitting his back against a tree. After which, coughing up blood, he fell to the ground. He couldn't believe that his energy, which sucked his life force out of his hand, gnawed his hand to the bone, which was about to fall off, turned out to be hopeless. You can't kill me. I am from the White Dragon Temple on Black Cloud Mountain, he shouted breathlessly. I don't care, Zhang replied, and concentrating the power in his index finger, he directed it at the old man. He didn't even have time to answer anything as pain began to burn through his chest. Those who go against me will die at my hands without mercy, Qing Tian said to himself, watching as the old man's body with a hole burned in his body fell to the ground, after which he waited until the neutralized enemy took his last breath and headed for the exit. But then they called out to him, Young man, wait. It was a grandfather with his granddaughter hiding behind the gravestones. It turned out his name was Huang Fu Kanjai. He thought that he would be killed by this evil cultivator, but he did not expect Zhang to save them, and therefore was very grateful for his kindness. For me this is a mere trifle, our hero answered, not wanting to waste more time. Young man, if you ever need my help in the future just ask. I still command some respect in this area of the South Island. Offered a kind of payment for saving lives, Kanzai. But our hero politely refused, 
Now his so calm and imperturbable behavior began to irritate his granddaughter Kanzai. Her green eyes sparkled and her bangs began to twitch nervously. What kind of relationship is this? Do you even know who my grandfather is? She was indignant. Yun, don't be rude to him. Kanjai stopped her. Grandfather, in our family it is not customary to remain in debt. Let him name his price and we will give him what he wants. Yun continued to argue. The man was speechless from her bickering. Their squabble was stopped by the chuckle of our hero. Name the price? I'm afraid you won't pull it off, he said. In a past life, he had so much power and influence that he was offered the earth as payment for resolving the conflict. But he did not agree. And this girl standing in front of him asks him to name the price for saving a life. It just makes him laugh. But then Kanshai bowed his head before him. I beg your pardon. This is my granddaughter Yun Huang Fu and I spoiled her. Please accept my apologies. He apologized to Yun's quiet cries of resistance. After which he reached into the secret chest pocket of his jacket. This is a gift from the Huang Fu family. Please accept it in gratitude for saving me and my granddaughter. He said, handing Zhang an amulet made of green stone. Grandfather, this magical jade is too precious a gift. Yun continued to protest, clenching her fists. But Mr. Kanjai, slightly raising his voice, asked her to remain silent. Our hero, to put it mildly, was surprised by this turn of events. Did he really have a gem with divine power? He thought with a calm face as he took the amulet. Well, in that case, Jade will do. Thank you, we're even now. The young man said goodbye, and without revealing his name, he headed towards the exit from the cemetery. Grandfather, with this magical Jade, the Huang Fu family could afford everything, even if they went bankrupt. You overestimated him too much. The granddaughter was thinking, looking after the young man. Yun, what kind of person do you think that soul cultivator is? Kanjai asked. A master of spiritual power is one step away from becoming a great master. The girl suggested, remembering the old man. And this young man easily dealt with him. So how strong is he? Grandfather continued to think. Do you mean that he is possibly a master of the highest level? Yun gasped. Impossible. But 90%, her grandfather said confidently. He also reminded me that on planet Earth, masters of the highest level are rare. They rarely go out into the world and are arrogant. So ordinary people do not even have the right to get to know them. Do you think it was worth giving him magical jade for the opportunity to meet a top-level master? Kanzai asked again. Well, if so, then of course it's worth it. Besides, he's so young and has already become a great master. It's impressive. Yun agreed. Meanwhile, our hero had moved quite far from the cemetery and was now walking along a forest path trying to find a secluded place. The Divine Power Stone, as the name suggests, is a kind of spiritual thing that contains the sacred power of the earth and sky. A magical power that can reveal a certain human potential in the kingdom of the celestials. This was rare, and Qingtian did not expect that such an artifact would appear on the tiny earth. Well, he was very lucky. Finally, his eyes noticed a small stone boulder, and the young man headed towards it. Having sat comfortably in the lotus position, he decided to take this opportunity and absorb the stone of divine power. For some time, Zhang silently looked at the carved face on the amulet, after which he squeezed it tightly in his palm. Ultimately, this stone could activate divine power. First, the gem dissolved in the air, concentrating its energy in the young man's palm, after which he directed the energy to his forehead. Watching the lightning coming out of him, our hero breathed out a sigh of relief. He did it, after which he raised his hand and pointed it at a nearby stone boulder lying a couple of meters away, which immediately exploded into dozens of smaller stones. The divine power of lightning is very powerful. The lightning that our hero used against Hu Tianhua on the cruise ship is nothing compared to the one that just crushed the stone. Of course, it will do for intimidating ordinary people, but it is not enough for a battle with the main enemy. And therefore, he should be well prepared. Since the power of lightning has no drawbacks, as long as there is a sufficient amount of magical power in the body, it can be used and as it improves, the power will quickly increase. The young man spent the rest of this crazy day and the beginning of the next, in meditation and self-improvement. The next morning, two lightning bolts suddenly flashed at the bottom of the gorge. Bang! It was the second spark that collided with the first, after which an explosion occurred on the slope of the mountain range. And it was he who attracted the attention of our hero. Interested in what was happening, he began to observe with curiosity. In front of him, two people in mechanical armor of red and purple colors fought in the air. Of both of them, the red one caught up with the purple one, and from the next blow the purple one fell to the ground. 
Ling Xiaoshuang, how did you manage to travel several hundred miles and still not escape your elder brother's control? The man in the red suit said with a mocking voice. Bai Feng, you are a very shameless person. The man in the purple suit was indignant at his words, which gradually began to lose its physical form and became transparent. Another minute, and there was nothing left of the purple mechanical suit on the body of a pretty girl with wheat-colored hair and blue eyes. Meanwhile, Ching Chen hurried to the place of their skirmish. Observing the situation from the side according to the girl's words. Don't come close to me. Addressed to the man in the red suit, he realized that they both clearly did not get along. But most of all, he was interested in something completely different. Battle armor? He didn't understand whether it was because of his appearance that the world had changed, or whether the armor had always been there, and he just didn't know about it in a past life. Now since Xiao Shuang lost her mechanical armor, Bai Feng decided to show his face, only... Unlike the girl, his suit was in good working order. I advise you not to resist. I have been watching you for more than one or two days. He said, watching as the last parts of the mecha armor disappeared into space. Like the suit, he had bright red hair that was difficult to lose in a crowd of people, and purple eyes that drove everyone crazy. This time, I will not allow you to escape, and will do everything in my power to get the necessary information from you. These years of my efforts will not go down the drain, he continued, dropping to the ground. You vile, shameless person, Xiao Shuang shouted to him, but Feng only laughed at her words. However, then the girl noticed movement out of the corner of her eye and saw Zhang standing to the side, after which she immediately ran up to him. Save me, please help me, she prayed. The girl really looked unwell. She had a split lip, disheveled hair, several bruises on her face and completely sweaty clothes. Do you think you can use someone as a shield? Avoid me? How naive. Bai laughed, coming closer. He was amused by the very appearance of our hero. As a real man, I don't need a combat suit to cope with him. After all, with one blow I can knock down a dead guy like him. Feng announced, pointing his finger at Ching Tian. Now you better come to me and do me good or you will regret it. He presented his conditions. Well, no. You are such a bastard that I would rather die than let you touch my body. Xiao Shuang disagreed. And turning to our hero, she advised him to leave here, since it was her fault that she got him into trouble and asked him not to worry about her. Bai Feng rolled his eyes. Lin, you are seriously injured, right? And your armor was also broken by me. There's nothing you can do now, so why not just give up? You should be grateful that a person like me has sympathy for you. Not paying attention to the stranger standing next to him, he approached her with wide steps and grabbed the girl's wrist roughly and pulled her towards him. Xiao Shuang began to struggle, but the guy was much stronger than her, and she could not cope with him, so tears appeared in her eyes from powerlessness. I pursued you for so long, but you rejected me every time, always acting like some kind of goddess. Today I'm going to beat some good manners out of you, and then I'll take you forever, and you'll become one of my disposable girls, Feng shouted, leaning on the girl with his whole body and knocking her to the ground. Anticipating pleasure, he did not hear how someone's steps were getting closer and closer in their direction. If you want to live, let her go and get out of here. Our hero presented an ultimatum. After his words, Bai stopped. What did you just say? He asked, releasing the girl. She is too weak and he will be able to find her later in any case. But the boy standing in front of him has already begun to really bother him. Get lost in all four directions, Ching Tian repeated. Wait, did I hear you correctly? How dare you threaten me? Do you even know who I am? Feng laughed in his face, since no one ever dared to talk to him like that on the South Island. An unimaginable desire arose in him to beat Jiang to death, and without wasting time, he immediately rushed at him with his fists. But Chintian was no mistake either. He managed to jump to the side and intercepted the enemy's hand, thereby nullifying the attack. I don't care how strong you are. Your cultivation is not enough to defeat me. I can crush you with just one finger. The owner of the fur armor continued to threaten but he immediately regretted his words when our hero grabbed his hand with both hands and dislocated his shoulder. When I picked him up like a feather, and waving it like a stick, he threw it several meters away. Having fallen to the ground, Bai could not even move for the first few seconds. From such a throw a couple of his ribs were broken. Our hero slowly approached him. I would like to see you crush me with one finger. He smiled. How dare you provoke me! I will make you regret that you were born, unfortunate one! At times I cough up blood, Feng shouted back to him, and by pressing several buttons on the dial of his watch, 
he called up the mechanical armor system. And at the same moment he put on them, now in front of our hero stood a three-meter Iron Man. Armor which, according to his creator, the engineer, cannot be pierced either by a bullet or by a sword. I will now show you the power of my armor. Now you will see how I will crush you with one finger, he said, holding out his right index finger for everyone to see. Be careful, his armor is among the top in strength on the island. They are made of super strong alloy. Dodge it quickly, Xiao Shuang warned, worried about the savior. And here is that very exciting moment when Feng put his hand forward. But Qing Tian, holding his finger with his hand, held it back, so that the enemy could not help but pull it back and push it further. After which he squeezed his finger so hard that under his pressure it split into a dozen pieces like a sugar figurine. Xiao Shuang gasped at what she saw. She didn't understand how such armor, made of the strongest alloy, how could it be broken? Unlike her, after Bai saw his finger crumble, he became more angry than before. But our hero was also able to stop his clenched fist on the move. Now Bai Feng also fell into a stupor, and Xiao Shuang continued to admire the incredible strength of the savior. Damn! I'll blow you up! Feng shouted in a fit of hatred, and a long-range cannon came out of his breast pocket. But against such weapons, Zhang used his newly acquired lightning strike skill. And then the machine gun fired, and the bullet, by direct inertia, flew into Zhang's very chest. And having reached the target, it exploded, sparkling with a bright red flame. This is what people get when they try to pretend to be heroes. You should have run, not gotten in my way. Feng laughed, watching the light smoke rise into the sky, while Lin fell to her knees and shook in sobs. She reproached herself for the death of an innocent person, because she did not act on her desire. Now this dude is definitely dead. The man in red armor continued to mock. Well, imagine his surprise when the dust slowly began to settle, and from it came the following. Are you talking about me? This is impossible. This was my strongest powerful blow. How can he remain unharmed? Feng was amazed. Our hero smiled. Now it was his turn to strike and bring the enemy to his knees. Using the divine power of lightning, he decided to fry by. As soon as the electric discharge touched the man's armored armor, it immediately smashed him to pieces, like a clay pot that was thrown against a wall. And three minutes later, Feng was lying on the ground again. The only difference being that his modern battle armor was broken. Barely finding the strength to hold his head, he cursed and threatened our hero, saying that he could not pay for these furs, even with his life. And that's all you want to say as your last words? Kintian said without raising an eyebrow. Last word? Do you really have the courage to kill me? Do you have any idea what kind of force supports me? Feng laughed in response. But the smile instantly disappeared from his face when Zhang turned around and raised his leg. And trying not to go too far, he hit the man on the head. So much so that he turned over in the air and did several somersaults, after which he landed on all fours. Your death was already decided the second you went against me, our hero said slowly, as if stretching out the dying moments of the victim's life. Bai Feng raised his head. One of his eyes was leaking, and the other was filled with horror. No, stop! I'm sorry, I was wrong! He asked for mercy. However, the pleas were not heard. For some time he convulsed from the divine lightning that struck him. And when he calmed down, Zhang stopped tormenting his lifeless body. Having finished with the enemy, our hero was about to leave the battlefield. But Ling Xiaoshuang called out to him. What do you want? He asked. Are you a cultivator? With burning eyes, Xiaoshuang answered the question with a question. Zhen decided to leave this question unanswered. He had not walked even a couple of steps when the girl turned to him again only this time with a request. Like, could he take her to the hotel because her mecha armor is broken and she doesn't have any navigation device, and she's also wounded? In a word, she's afraid to go alone. And again, our hero did not answer anything, only slowed down so that Lin could keep up with him. For a long time they walked in silence, but finally curiosity prevailed, and Xiao Shuang wanted to know the name of her savior. The young man introduced himself. And my name is Ling Xiao Shuang. Brother, you must be from the Cultivation Union, right? The girl suggested. Our hero did not understand her. Cultivation Union? Never heard of him, he asked again. His answer sent Xiao Shuang into a state of shock. You are so strong. Even Bai Feng was shattered with one blow. Do you really not know about the Cultivation Alliance? She was amazed. But Zhang really did not know about the Alliance and asked for more details about it. This is a cultivation alliance consisting of a group of people who have come together to form a great force. This top echelon of the Union are mysterious. Their level is unpredictable. They say they have influence all over the world. However, in order to join the Cultivation Union, 
you must pass a special exam and undergo a strict and difficult selection process. But with your strength, you can easily join them, Xiao Shuang assured. And she said that in addition to this, the Cultivation Union has rivals who call themselves the Exaltation League. It is a powerful organization formed by all the metahumans and mechanical warriors in the world. These two organizations are at enmity and therefore constantly conflict, which is why they fight for first place. But recently, the Ascension League suppressed the Cultivation Union, resulting in difficult times for the cultivators. The Cultivation Union, the Exaltation League, none of these organizations existed in my past life. It seems like the world has truly changed in some ways, our hero thought listening to Lin. But perhaps the most surprising news was that Bai Feng in the South Island was also a member of the Exaltation League. Xiao Shuang advised Zhang not to tell anyone what happened today, otherwise the Bai family and the Exaltation League would come after him. The best option would be to leave the island for a while, because if they find out about Bai Feng's killer, then he will face suffering worse than death. Who are metahumans, and why are they so afraid? Our hero continued to ask questions. These are people who have mutated and become incredibly strong. They were born thanks to a special serum. They are people with different abilities and should not be mistaken for weaklings. Both we and the Mecha Warriors can easily increase their combat power. This is why they are able to suppress cultivators who evolve slowly and cannot resist them. Xiao Shuang explained, raising her index finger upward. But after listening to her, Qijin came to the conclusion that fur warriors are nothing, since they depend only on external mechanical forces, and set himself the goal that no matter how much the world has changed, since he is a venerable demon, he decided to destroy all the evil that exists in it world. This time he will stand in the heavens, but this time not as an immortal, but as a venerable demon. Now he is on his own in this life. After some time riding in a taxi on the way back from the cemetery to Yunzhou, the guys stood in the city center among the skyscrapers. Nothing threatens you here, and then I think I'll go. Our hero said goodbye, but Lin ran up to him and grabbed the hem of his shirt, not wanting to let go. I don't know anyone in this city, and my family will arrive only tomorrow. Can I stay at your house overnight? She asked. Xing Tian did not expect to hear such a request. In my house? I live in a dorm. He was embarrassed, but his answer caused a storm of emotions in Xiao Shuang. So you're a student? And how old are you? Questions rained down on the young man's head as if out of a bag. And without waiting for an answer, the girl, like a leech, stuck to him, almost demanding to show her a tour of his college. There was nothing to do, and after 20 minutes of riding by bus, they stood at the main entrance of the educational institution. How many years has our hero not been here? And now he will again have to cross the threshold of Donglin University, the place where he studied in a previous life. In contrast, Xiao Shuang, with burning eyes, went first, and when the guys passed by some regular company, exclamations and groans were immediately heard about Lin's beautiful appearance, as well as a wave of envy towards our hero. The whole day on the run made itself felt by an insatiable feeling of hunger, and therefore the owner of Blue Eyes asked Zhang to take her to the dining room in order to refresh herself. And as always, without waiting for an answer, inspired that she would soon taste the food, the girl ran towards the smell coming from the dining room. As soon as our hero entered the buffet, he noticed his ex with his best friend in the distance. However, they were talking so enthusiastically that they did not notice the guys entering. Because of the way he behaved, Hu Tanhua and Hu Xiao will remain in the hospital for several days. When they get better, they will definitely give Zhang a hard time. You were with him for a long time, but still, I'm glad you chose to leave him, Lily chattered, helping herself to a tray of food, clearly forgetting about the calories. Hey, let's forget about it. Xiaoran pulled it back. You will see everything for yourself after you left him. There will no longer be a woman interested in him. Ili continued to convince her friend. But if only they knew how insidious fate could be. Brother, the nuggets in your canteen are very tasty. Here's one for you. A gentle girlish voice chirped. The girls turned towards the voice, because they could not identify it, who it belonged to. And imagine their surprise when the owner of the voice was standing too close to our hero. I'm not hungry. Zhang waved his hand away from the outstretched chicken leg. Just one piece, oh please, Xiao Shuang continued to insist. And not tolerating any objections, she came close to the young man, wrapped her hand around his neck, pulling him towards her and holding out the nugget. It was that same romantic scene from the movie after which the guys were supposed to fall in love with each other and live their whole lives together, but they were prevented. I demand from you now an explanation about who she is, Xiao Ran shouted, breathless with indignation. 
Her face was already distorted with a grimace of anger. Why should I report to you? Ching Tian answered her without losing composure. I didn't expect you to be such a person. I can't believe you found a new friend so quickly. The ex-girlfriend was indignant, her eyes sparkling menacingly, and her best friend, in support of her, did not find anything better than to cover our hero with good obscenities. Well, if I'm such a scum, then who are you and Hu Tanhua? Zhang asked them a rhetorical question. By that time, all the visitors in the dining room had come running to the screams. Our hero's once quiet romance with Xiaoran, and now with Hu Tanhua, became one of the main topics of discussion at the university. Only now the jokes were flying towards the fidgety girl, since the new girl of our hero is much better than her in terms of appearance, figure, and elegance. Needless to say, the two friends did not like such remarks. So brother was in love with this woman. Interesting, Xiao Shuang realized. But here Xiaoran seemed to have broken free. I order you to get away from this prostitute, she demanded. But Lin also had a persistent character. Who are you to order him? She asked her ex-girlfriend Chintian. But Xiaoran rudely asked her to remain silent because no one gave her the right to speak. Shut up, do you even know what kind of relationship my friend has with Hu Tanhua? Lily put in her two cents. Xiao Shuang frowned, and letting go of our hero's hand, she stepped forward. I don't even know what happened between you, but I can say something with confidence that it was you who betrayed your brother. However, there is still one thing I would like to tell you, she said, and proudly raising her head upward, she said publicly, Good job, cheap prostitute. Then she added that Zhang is an amazing, outstanding person, and a girl like Xiao Ran does not deserve him. You should leave him forever, Lin finally finished. Say one more word and I'll tear your mouth apart. Shaking off the falling strands from her forehead, Xiaoran screamed that she had strength. She didn't remember the last time she was so angry, but then the air around Xiao Shuang began to thicken, and seeing how she became taller and stronger before her eyes, Zhang's ex-girlfriend stopped mid-sentence without closing her mouth. Come on, try to break it, Lin repeated her above words, donning her innovative armor, and my best friend saw them in front of her for the first time in her life and was speechless from surprise. I warn you for the first and last time. Do not bother my brother, Xiao Shuang said, taking on human forms again. Okay, let's go, our hero said, turning 180 degrees. Xiao Shuang had not yet filled her stomach, and therefore wanted to stay in the dining room and eat something else. But the young man did not want to stay here any longer. As soon as they left, the shocked crowd began to share their impressions among themselves. The cheapest mecha suit costs $10,000. But this was a high-end suit, and I can't even imagine its price. Some whispered. Zhang was lucky to find such a beautiful rich girlfriend. His ex now looks confused. What a face! Others laughed. And Xiaoran still couldn't believe that her desperate admirer, who sacrificed himself all to her, turned away from her. And our hero should at least take henna, because he had just been able to wipe his ex-girlfriend's nose and Xiao Shuang's contented purring from eating food somehow strangely lifted his spirits. But still, there was one thing that bothered him from the very beginning, and she just called him back as soon as she could. The phone in the right pocket vibrated. Pulling it out into Ching Tian, I saw the parent's number displayed. Hello, son. Have you called me recently? The father greeted. From his voice, the young man smiled and greeted him back. Tell me honestly, are you short of money again? Don't worry, I understand. It's normal to bear expenses when you have a girlfriend. I'll send you some money later. Wiping sweat from his forehead with a dirty glove, the father hastened to a conclusion. No need. I still have money. I was glad to hear your voice. Chintian hastened to assure him. Hey, where did you learn to be so dramatic? The father laughed quietly, not noticing how the boss, barely seeing his legs because of his beer belly, was walking towards him with a proud gait. Lao, don't be so lazy! Quickly take that fittings to the roof, the chief ordered, coming closer and raising his voice. Out of surprise, our hero's father almost dropped the phone. Hearing the noise, John inquired about the source of the sound. Nothing. I have some work. I have to go. Let's talk later. One of these days I'm going to visit my friends in Yunzhou, so when I arrive I'll be able to meet up, Lao said, barely having time to pronounce the words. Before Ching Tian could say goodbye, his father hung up. Okay, Dad, I'll wait for you the young man promised, listening to lips from his mobile phone. He was incredibly glad that despite the fact that the world had changed, his parent was fortunately still alive. Lao, if I catch you on the phone again, I'll fire you. The boss continued to get angry. Boss, please excuse me, I was talking to my son. 
Lao apologized. I don't care who you called, but if the work is not done, then you will lose your job, the boss shouted. Meanwhile, our hero and his companion are leisurely strolling through the park near the university. Do you have money? Zhang asked after thinking. Certainly, I'll give you as many of them as you need. Xiao Shuang perked up, feeling that he could soon pay his savior with minted coins. Since you have finances, then find yourself a hotel, and stay in it for the night and don't follow me anymore. Our hero ordered, and his words seemed to cut through the girl's heart, and for the third time that day she ran up to him from behind, wrapping her arms around him. This time she asked him to accompany her to the hotel. I don't want to. Zhang refused. But I'm scared to go alone. Xiao Shuang became capricious. Then the young man, not paying attention to her indignation, simply walked forward, leaving her behind. Well, the girl wasn't going to just give up. Just see me off to the hotel, or I'll continue to follow you wherever you go. I'll go too, she said again, running up to our hero. Ching Tian finally realized that he couldn't get rid of Lin just like that, and the only option he had was to see her off. In his past life, he was called a demon, but he fell in love with a fairy of the Imperial Palace. She was sometimes angry, sometimes capricious. Her character was somewhat similar to that of Ling Xiao Shuang, who also calls him brother, like his lover. The love between immortals and demons was natural, but she was the one who was willing to face heaven to stand next to a demon, and how she cared for her lover. Brother, this is the heavenly grass that grew in my backyard. This is for you to top up your QZ, she said handing over a small bag, and Royun in. When she needed to return home for a while, Royun always asked him not to miss her. She also thought about their future together, and, in order to be a worthy wife, she always tried to train harder in order to protect both herself and him if something happened. And no matter where they were, no matter what situation they found themselves in, no matter what obstacles they faced, she always said that she loved him. Royun, wait. Sooner or later I will return to the ancient continent and find you. Our hero promised, remembering the past. While he and Lin were getting to the hotel, the sun had already set below the horizon, and stars seemed to appear in the sky. After driving around the city for some time, they stopped on Huahe Street. Brother, I want to stay in this hotel, Xiao Shuang wished, seeing the bright lights of the hotel. And having paid for the taxi, the guys got out of the car, stepping on the soft carpet, which muffled their steps. But then they were stopped by a doorman standing on the porch, who inquired about their purpose of arrival. We are here to stay the night, our hero explained. Then you made the reservation in advance? The doorman continued to ask. But Xiao Shuang rolled her eyes and replied that she didn't know that she should book in advance. Sorry, this is the most prestigious hotel in the city. I can't let people in without a reservation. If you haven't made a reservation, please leave. The hotel employee crossed his arms over his chest and blocked the road. What's going on here? Hotel manager Van Baden came out to the noise. Come closer, he recognized our hero. Excuse me, but do we know each other? Zhang asked. The corners of the manager's mouth turned up. Of course, you have become quite famous. Yesterday at the cruise party, you dared to offend Mr. Huang Fu. You definitely have the courage, said Badan. Manager Wang, this guy said he wants to stay here for the night. The doorman explained the situation. Is this so? Badan asked and, catching the doorman's affirmative nod, raised his index finger as high as possible. Guys, do you know who the second largest share of this hotel is? This is Mr. Hugh's father. You pathetic boy, brought this dirty woman here and want to take a room for the night? You came to the wrong place, get out of here, he demanded. As soon as manager Wong closed his mouth, the doorman continued, saying that only high society can afford such a luxurious hotel, and our hero, such a poor man, only has enough for a tiny room in an alley. I will say my wish again. We want to stay here for the night, so please go and prepare the room. Ching Tian repeated, trying not to get irritated. But the manager again and again told the young man to take his dirty woman with him, after which he sent them to hell in person. Zhang no longer wanted to listen to such insults, and when Ba Dun shouted right in his face, he raised his hand and hit him in the face. At this time, Xiao Ran and her best friend came out of the hotel, clicking their black patent heels and dressed in beautiful evening dresses, and the manager fell right at their feet. Are you all right? Xiao Ran became worried. Mr. Wang, who had the courage to hit you? Lily chirped next to her. You girls are just in time. It's him. This pathetic guy came here to stay the night in a hotel with this woman, whom he took from God knows where, the manager complained, pointing at Zhang. At first, surprise mixed with misunderstanding of how this happened was reflected in the eyes of the friends. Then when the first impression passed and hatred began to swim in their eyes, 
How disgusting you are. First you eat together and then, as if that wasn't enough, you rent a room together. You disappointed me. Barely balancing on the heels of the shoes and approaching the pair, Xiaoran was indignant. After which she demanded that our hero tell her how he met the girl standing next to him. It's none of your business and it doesn't concern you. Ching Tian answered her. Then his beater threatened that if she didn't wait for an explanation, she would tear Xiao Shuang's face into small pieces. And without hesitation, she reached out to her to show the seriousness of her intentions. Finally, Lin lost her patience and when Xiao Ren grabbed her by the shirt, she slapped her in the face. How dare you hit me! Xiao Ren was indignant, feeling her cheek, but then she received a second slap in the face. And without having time to turn away, she received the third one. Brother can put up with your behavior, but I can't. Xiao Shuang stated. Mr. Wang, call the guards! Xiao Ran demanded sitting on her knees, but she might not have said this. Security, arrest this idiot and his cheap girlfriend, the manager shouted at the top of his voice, standing up and shaking his trousers. Well, the hotel's security system was good and it immediately responded to the order. Before our hero had time to do anything, he and the girl were immediately surrounded by guards, and the beaten Xiao Ran shouted after them to beat Lin to death as revenge. Rolling up their sleeves, the guards began to move closer and closer to the guys, trying to twist them by the arms. But Xiao Shuang was not going to give up her position, and putting her hands on her hips, began to watch who would dare to touch her first. But the guards were stopped by a loud whistle. What's going on here? The head of the hotel manager, Zheng Kai, who came out to hear the noise, demanded an explanation. Mister, what brought you here? Badan asked, instantly putting a smile on his face as if nothing had happened. The manager frowned. Blocking the entrance to the hotel and causing scenes that negatively affect the hotel's reputation. Remember already, we are a luxury hotel, he answered. Mr. Zheng, this happened because of this girl's inscrutability. When we refused to give her a room for her poor boy, she began to behave inappropriately. Pointing towards the couple, the manager made excuses. First Kai looked at our hero, and then turned his gaze to Lin, and recognizing the girl, his heart began to beat wildly, and cold sweat appeared on his back. While he could not come to his senses because of such an unexpected meeting, Xiao Ren continued to sarcastically, Now it's all over with you. Now that the general manager of our hotel is here, both of you will regret your behavior. She rejoiced. Manager Wang nodded to the guard standing next to him so that Qing Tian and Xiao Shuang would be placed under arrest. Meanwhile, the CEO began to approach the couple. The manager, security and Xiao Ren and her best friend smiled contentedly. Now they were sure that Mr. Kai would reprimand them completely. But imagine their surprise when he bowed his head as low as possible and greeted Xiao Shuang. I welcome Miss Chairman Lin. I sincerely apologize that my staff did not recognize you. I ask your forgiveness. Kai begged, growing colder under the girl's gaze. After his words, everyone fell into a precipitate, not believing what they heard. What the hell are these idiots doing? They don't even recognize the hotel's largest shareholder, Chairman Lin? Mr. Manager was nervous. After all, in fact, the girl who was saved by our hero was a famous female leader in Zhuzhou and came from a noble family of great origin. Moreover, there was no one in Yunzhou who did not know her. Now even Xiao Ran regretted her above-mentioned offensive words and reproached herself for her careless language. Xiao Shuang walked up to her with a confident gait and slapped her again for her courage to raise her voice at her. Sorry, Chairman. I didn't know who you were. Xiao Ran asked for forgiveness. The next person in line to receive a slap was the manager, but it couldn't be done with just one blow. And when Xiao Shuang hit him a second time, his glasses came off. Forgive me, Chairman. I didn't recognize you, Badan said, hanging his head. So, you are all a bunch of trash who beat up Mr. Jang and the Chairman. Kneel down and apologize, Kai ordered, and he was ready to bend over backwards so that he would not be removed from the position of General Director. The security and manager immediately fell to their knees and hit their foreheads on the sidewalk next to the feet of our hero and Lin. Okay, brother, I don't want to stay here overnight. Having got what she wanted, the chairwoman said, and turned sharply on her heels, grabbing Chintian's hand and waving to the taxi standing next to her. Damn, what a gigolo he is. There really is no shame in him. As soon as the guys went to a safe distance, Xiaoren began to be indignant. My dear, how could Chairman Lin who has such a prestigious status care about such an abnormal person as Zhang. She just plays with it, and when she gets tired of it, she throws it away like garbage. You'll see, began to calm her friend Lily. After a while, Qintian Xiaoshuang stood at the reception of the new hotel. Now that I brought you here, it's time for me to leave, summed up our hero. Brother, 
Weren't you even surprised when you found out who I was? Lin asked, shifting from foot to foot. But the young man just shook his head, and waving his hand, headed towards the exit. Xiao Shuang looked after him thoughtfully. Many men chased her, but she had never met a man like Qing Tian. It seemed to her that he had an interest in another girl, but is that true? As soon as the sun's rays fell on our hero again, the phone rang with an incoming call. Hello, Mr. Zhang. This is Yun Huang Fu, and I want to ask you for a favor. Are you free at the moment? A girl's voice chattered as soon as Chintian picked up the phone. For the first few seconds, our hero was silent. Please, if you are free, we will come for you right now, the girl begged. The young man sighed. It's been a day and a half since he returned to his student years and problems won't leave him. But what can you do? Meanwhile, Xiao Ran and her friend gloated, hiding in an alley and watching the lonely Jang leave the hotel. I didn't expect him to be kicked out so quickly. My dear, no matter how much you cling to Miss Lin, you are from different worlds. After all, it's just natural to be abandoned for someone like him. Xiao Ran enjoyed. I support your thought, this is what he deserves. Lily agreed with her. Ten minutes later, Yun Huang Fu, whom our hero and her grandfather saved in the cemetery, came into their field of vision. Is it really she? Of course I saw her on the internet, but I didn't expect her to be so beautiful. Xiao Ren gasped. She didn't know why Yun appeared in this place, but her family was one of the most influential in Yunzhou, and was much more powerful than Hu Tanhua's. Since Xiao Ren was no match for Yun Huang Fu, it would be a blessing from heaven for her to meet this girl. But here the best friends experienced a fiasco for the third time in the last day and a half. Zheng, I'm here, Yun greeted. And after shaking hands, she pointed out to our hero the approaching limousine, offering to sit down. What? The best friends shouted in one voice when the car doors slammed shut. I can't believe it. Is the reason Miss Huang Fu came here to meet my ex? Xiao Ran was indignant. Did he switch to another girl so quickly? His arrogance knows no bounds. Lily was indignant with her. After a short time, the limousine stopped at the gates of a luxurious estate. Kanzai was waiting for our hero, leaning against the iron bars. Seeing the car approaching, he came out to meet the guest with outstretched arms. You seem very worried. Tell me why you called me. Our hero immediately got down to business. Come in. Now I'll tell you everything. Mr. Huang Fu answered, pointing his hand deeper into the estate. Having entered the house, they entered a hall without windows or doors. There, on a spacious couch, lay two young men in suits, who looked like they were security guys. Near them stood a gray-haired old man in a long gray-blue kimono. It was him who Kanzai introduced to our hero. It turned out his name was Liu Xiangchang, and he was a famous master of Longhushan Mountain. After which he introduced the young man to the old man, mentioning that Zhang had an unusual talent. Sanshen rolled his eyes. Mr. Huang Fu, the world is full of scammers these days. Don't be fooled, or you will end up losing all your money. He answered the greeting. It seemed as if the appearance of our hero in his presence seemed an insult. Mr. Zhang, these two guys on the couch are descendants of my royal family. They have been in a strange state of sleep since they arrived here in the evening and still have not woken up. Could you please take a look at them and help us figure out what's wrong with them? Huang Fu asked, pointing at the two lying guys. There is no need to look at them. These two were sent. Ching Tian answered without hesitation for a second. In truth, he did not expect to meet and kill a ghost cultivator yesterday. And now, after seeing these two young men, he came to the conclusion that he had stumbled upon another evil arts cultivator in the Yunju circle. Nonsense vampire poison? So they were bitten by a vampire? How can vampires appear in broad daylight? Have you really seen enough movies? I didn't believe the words of our hero Xiang Chang. Apparently you have never seen vampires, have you? Zhang grinned. Since I am the elder of Long Hushan Mountain, I can tell you with a 100% guarantee that there is no such thing in the world as vampires. We are in an era where science and technology are being developed at an incredible speed. So you should not be fooled by this fantasy of fantasy literature. The old man was indignant, after which he turned to Mr. Huang Fu and reminded him that he really brought a charlatan to his estate, who can only make things up. But if this is not vampire poison, then what does Master Liu think about this? Kanzai asked, letting the insult go unnoticed. Most likely this is due to the consumption of poisonous herbs and results from the accumulation of toxins in the body. I have two bottles of strong medicine for these two, and I guarantee that after I give it to them, their symptoms will disappear, and they will wake up. Zhang Chang perked up, pulling out a small bottle from the inner pocket in his sleeve called Tamoto, and confident in his verdict, he sat down by the couch, uncorking the lid. 
These two are so sent that they will soon turn into vampires, so you better stay away from them and stay put. Our hero warned, Young man, I would like to advise you to become an honest person and learn from the old man. Zhang Xiangchang did not listen to advice. Pressing two fingers on the guy's jaw, thereby opening it slightly, he threw a small red pill into each person's mouth. After which, he publicly announced that the medicine should soon work and the children's lives should no longer be in danger. Of course, he himself did not see, because he stood with his back to the guys. But as soon as the pill got into the esophagus of the young people, the veins on their bodies swelled even more. And when they opened their eyes, their whites were completely black. And when Xiang Chang boasted about his miraculous medicine, the guys, as if on command, sat down on the couch. Master Liu, here behind you. Kanjai, scared to death, began to babble quickly. You mean they woke up, right? This is the expected result. After all, my medicine is a treasure that ordinary people cannot get. Now, they should be grateful to me that I cured them, Xiang Chang said, interrupting Huang Fu the elder. If our hero, watching what was happening, was able to control himself, since what was happening was expected for him, then Yun could barely stand on her feet. That's not the point, Master Liu. Please look back quickly. Kanzai continued to insist, trying not to succumb to the growing internal panic. Once again I tell you, there is nothing surprising there. Everything is as I expected. The old man answered, stroking his beard. But then he heard a strange wheezing behind him. And looking back, he was horrified. The young man whom Mr. Huang Fu brought turned out to be right, and in front of him there really were two vampires who were about to grab his body with their fangs. Well, what could he do against two whole vampires? That's right. Nothing and the creatures knocked him to the floor and immobilized their victim. Zhang, it's time for you to intervene. Looking at how one of the people present was about to lose his life, Kanjai became worried. Our hero nodded affirmatively, and with the speed of lightning found himself next to the vampires. Grabbing one by the ankle, he threw him to the other corner of the room. The second vampire immediately rushed at him, but Qingtian touched his forehead, concentrating his energy, and he lost consciousness and fell to the floor. Boy, I was just a little careless. I don't need your help. I can handle these two alone. Xiang Chan began to make excuses when the danger had passed. After which he stood up. His clothes were torn by the claws of vampires, and on his face, as well as throughout his body, scratches and bruises were visible. And thinking out loud, he came to the conclusion that these two guys were drugged, and therefore he would have to use a too harsh way to deal with them. And for this, he should resort to the power of cultivating magic. As soon as he waved his hands, rings of light rose in the air. Their originality lay in the fact that they produced a sound that was familiar to humans. But when they reached the vampire's ear, they caused immense pain. And Master Lu was pleased with himself and watched the agony of the vampires from the sidelines. At the same time, in between times, not forgetting to tell that he used the help of one magical artifact from his treasures, which can emit intense ultraviolet rays. Under an ultraviolet ray, any viruses, bacteria, or other toxins that are present in the body can be destroyed, and therefore it can cure vampires 100%. However, the rest of those present in the room did not agree with him, since it was clear that ultraviolet rays act not only on the vampire, but also on the rest of the human body. But they decided to keep their opinion to themselves. Boy, how about all this now? You know what I'm capable of. The old man turned to our hero. Master Lu deserves to be one of the best-known cultivators on the continent. The delighted Kanzai clapped his hands, but our hero hastened to break everyone off. Your so-called treasure works because vampires, as everyone knows, are afraid of bright light, he said. In addition, two vampires are not completely cured, but if you continue to use the artifact, they will not survive. The poison has already invaded the internal organs of these two people so much that it is impossible to save them. Don't talk nonsense, brat. Xiang Zhang was indignant at such a statement. But he immediately stopped short when the ultraviolet rays from the artifact stopped working and disappeared. It was Chintian who absorbed ultraviolet rays with the help of his aura, and he approached each of the vampires in turn, not forgetting to absorb the demonic energy in their bodies. After a few minutes of such intensive therapy, the guys began to come to their senses, and after some time, even consciousness returned to them. Finally you woke up. Thank heavens, please tell me what happened to you, Mr. Wang Fu asked, rushing between the guys. Recalling the events of the previous day, the guys described these creatures. They looked like ghouls and were digging a gold mine. Kanzai, of course, did not understand what they meant and asked again to tell him in more detail. In general, we went down to the gold mine to check one of the incidents. As we were walking, we unexpectedly wandered into a cemetery. 
one boy said with tears in his eyes. Cemetery? Are you sure you're not mistaken? The gold mine is located hundreds of meters underground. How can there be a cemetery there? Asked Mr. Huang Fu. But the guys were sure that this was definitely a cemetery. After all, most of the workers along with them were killed by these creatures. After which they were later dragged into a coffin and woke up here in the estate of the Huang Fu family. So it turns out that the guys are here because of the gold mine? Having heard the story, our hero decided to get down to business. Kanzai sighed. In order to understand what was happening, he would have to be honest and tell the whole truth. The gold mine on the southern mountain belongs to the Wang Fu family. There were several suspicious incidents that caused it to stop working. First, it was the phantom cultivator that you killed. Initially, I wanted you to solve the problem with the spring. Besides, I already told you that I am grateful to you. But I want to remind you of this again, he explained. After which, he made a silent bow in front of Chintian. According to his plan, the invited Master Liu and our hero were supposed to completely solve the problem with the gold mine. Gentlemen, this gold mine ranks 10th in China in terms of mineral production. As such, the profit from the mine is simply enormous. If you are able to solve this problem, my Huang Fu family will be sincerely grateful to you. Kanjai asked, folding his hands to his chest. Okay, I don't see any problems. I am quite experienced. When it comes to such cases with my skills and abilities, I can handle it in no time. I will cut off the head of any demon or monster," Zhen Chai said, stroking his beard. Then Mr. Huang Fu asked Zhang's opinion. I absolutely agree with that old man, the young man immediately answered. Now he himself was interested in going to the gold mine, since there were definitely zombies there that would help him advance in cultivation. Then let's not hesitate and let's go there right away, Kanzai hurried. After some time, when they left the city, Several cars stopped at a mine, which was hidden among the mountain peaks. If you look at all the beauty that opened up before the arriving people, it was hard to believe that monsters were hiding underground. Grandfather, there are some problems that need to be solved in a golden vest. I will accompany both masters to enter the mine, Yun said pointing to a makeshift cave leading deep into the earth. Let's go, no matter what. As long as I'm around, no one will hurt you, Shang Chang said, squeezing forward. Then quickly moving sparks appeared in the sky above their heads. When they began to approach, the sparks took on the shape of people in mechanical suits. Yun became worried because this was a clear sign of people from the Bai family. Bang! This one man in armor landed on the ground. Another moment and it was followed by a second one. But then the suits began to turn into megapixels, which dissolved in the air, and two figures appeared in front of the stunned people. One of which was a fair-haired and light-eyed girl and next to her a man of about 40 in a suit. Bai Ching, what are you doing here? Yun hurried immediately to them. Well, I heard that there were problems in the gold mine and we flew in to help. Ching offered her services. Go away, my Huangfu family will deal with their problems themselves, and we don't need help from the Bai family. Yun refused. Ching smiled. Recently she had heard rumors that there had been problems at the gold mine for a long time. But if this is so, then why has no one solved them yet? I'll be honest. This time I'm using the Bai family's most advanced mechanical armor to help you deal with the situation at the gold mine, she said. But at the same time, she put forward her own condition. If she manages to resolve the problem, then the profits from gold mining will be divided equally between the Huangfu and Bai families. Yun couldn't find the words to express her indignation. Darling, I advise you to think everything over carefully. Instead of watching the gold mine gradually become abandoned, it is better for everyone to share the profits. Ching began to reason. The Huangfu family's gold mine will not be abandoned, Yun promised, pulling herself together. It was not for nothing that she specially invited two masters to resolve this issue, because the rest of those around should not poke their nose into their affairs. The Bai family representative bowed her head with her arms crossed and shook her hair, listening to her earrings jingle. Just two? One inexperienced youth and an old swindler? She asked, pointing her gaze towards the masters. The girl was even upset that she overestimated Yun, having such help in solving the problem. Watch your words. You can call me Liu Xiang Chang. I am a proponent of the fusion of technology and cultivation and have a famous reputation in the martial arts world. The old man greeted without waiting for him to be introduced. Yes, yes, I heard about this. Ching answered without paying attention to him, after which she walked up to the entrance to the mine, supposedly inviting everyone to follow her. Baby, did you hear? Even Madame Bai knows Liu Xiang Chang's name. Without noticing the joke, the old man rejoiced. You and your relatives should not interfere in the affairs of the Huangfu family, Yun repeated, 
raising her voice again. And having passed her rival, she shouted to her assistants to follow her into the mine. Well, you are free. But I want to follow and see everything with my own eyes. You won't stop my innocent curiosity, will you? Miss Huang Fu was heard behind her. If you encounter danger, you yourself will be responsible for the consequences. An echo came from the darkness to Ching. Xiang Chang was the first to descend into the mine, holding a special compass in front of him, which supposedly helped him navigate. Following him, Yun and our hero, then his assistants, were the last to close the Qing group with their confidant. Unlike others who looked at the environment in order to warn of danger if something happened, Zhang relied on his intuition. He noticed that there was a distinct dark and oppressive aura present in the mine, destroying the vitality of living beings. Although this is difficult for ordinary people to feel, but staying in the mine for too long will lead to serious illness after leaving. But then the young man, out of the corner of his eye, noticed movement from above. Thanks to his reaction, Xiang Chang appropriated the discovery of otherworldly power to himself and, flaunting his flight compass, announced that now a special energy would be discovered with its help. Turning the compass, he reassured everyone that everything inside the mine was normal. However, our hero had a completely different opinion, and until he resolved the problematic issue, he did not plan to move on. Is something wrong? Yun asked. Something infiltrated our group. Zhang shared his suspicions. But this cannot be, because the compass does not respond. Stop scaring people already. Master Liu got angry, because Qing Tian had once again tried to undermine his authority. So what happened? Yun continued to ask. Don't you see? Your master was scared. I kept my eyes on everyone. How could there be a traitor among us? I told you that they were charlatans, but you didn't believe me. Qing quipped. And the assistant nodded in support of her, saying that he was also watching everyone. Don't compare me with this inexperienced guy. I am a genius of technology and cultivation. Xiang Chang became more angry than ever, gesturing wildly. When we entered the mine, how many of us were there? Not paying attention to the old man, our hero addressed everyone. Ten people, the Bai family confidant reported. Then let's calculate how much now, Qing Tian suggested. One of Yun's assistants began to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when he called eleven, counting himself, he was amazed. Not only him, everyone was scared because there was one more person. What's going on? Yun hurried for an explanation to our hero. The young man's verdict was this. Among their group there is one non-human. Suddenly the Xiangchang compass, which the old man kept spinning without stopping, slipped out of his hands and fell to the ground. All those present began to look around in fear, trying to find out which of them had been added to the group after entering the mine. Everyone stand, now we will find out, Yun ordered. And she nodded to her most trusted employee so that it was he who would take on this work. Because it was he who organized the trip to the gold mine, and remembered all the participants. Coming closer, the assistant began to count everyone, calling out their names. But when I counted the person under the name Wang Lung twice, I stopped indecisive. At his call, our hero and Mrs. Huang Fu immediately turned around. There are two Wang Longs here, the assistant shouted, trying not to take his eyes off both guys. So in front of the group stood two young men, and one of them had to be not human but how to find out. After all, they both looked alike and each of them had the same voice. And which of you is a traitor? Better tell me right away or see my strength, Xiang Chang demanded, threatening. Perhaps he was just trying to resolve the situation peacefully? Madam, I am real, the guy on the right swore, placing his hand on his heart. No, I'm real, the guy on the left swore. Well, how can we understand now? Yun asked our hero a question. Then Xiang Chang decided to use his compass, activating it at full power. At first, like a flying saucer, the air rose and headed towards the two guys, after which he circled over them for some time. Strange, very strange, the old man said, observing the reaction of the compass. Then the Qing decided to take the situation into their own hands. She offered to kill the two, and when they would definitely get rid of the imposter. The girl decided to take on the role of the executioner at the same time, donning her mechanical suit. Seeing Miss Bai's determination, both guys fell to their knees, praying that she would listen to each of them and make the right choice. Don't move! Yun shouted and ran across Ching's path, covering the guys with herself. Wang Lung is from my family, so I will figure it out myself, she said menacingly, her eyes sparkling. And turning to Jang, she decided to listen to his opinion about the personalities of the guys. The one on the left is not real, Ching Tian announced, glancing briefly at the guys. Then the young man to whom he pointed under his verdict, heart-rendingly resisted. According to him, he has worked hard for the benefit of the Huangfu family for more than 10 years. And then how can he not be real? 
Under his hysteria, the real Wang Lung sighed with relief. Now he is not in danger of death. But now the rest of Yun's assistants were moving towards the non-human. Under the looming aura of our hero, the non-man began to change. His face was adorned with a grin with four huge fangs, and the whites of his eyes turned black. What kind of creature is this? Yun's assistants whispered among themselves when they saw the vampire. You ruined my plan! I will kill you! The monster screamed, and at the same second ran towards Jang. And now he had just a little bit left. The vampire stretched out his hand to grab our hero and suck all the blood out of him. But Ching Tian, without making any effort, slapped him so hard in the face that several of the vampire's teeth flew out. After which he flew to the side, rolling down into the depths of the mine over and over again. Finally he fell and his body, like smoke, began to dissolve into the air, leaving behind only a small puddle of blood. Clearly this is just a small ghost, not worth mentioning. Its power is too weak, I didn't even bother to detect it. Xiang Chan commented on the events, but his words did not reach Yun's ears. So everyone stay vigilant and move forward, he commanded, straightened his shoulders and headed further into the depths of the mine. After some time of silent walking, the group came to the same place with ghostly creatures. This hall differed from the others in its scale. Even electric lamps cannot penetrate into all the crevices of the darkness. And it was somewhere here, among the beams and all kinds of pipes, that it was hidden. Don't worry. With me all these evil spirits and monsters will be suppressed. Xiang Cheng began to boast, showing off his compass. This place really has a strong aura of hostility. The ferocious creatures here are more aggressive. They even set up a formation here, thought our hero, looking around. What ghosts? As soon as I start to act, they will all run away and this place will be safe, Shang Chang said. Still, I think it's better for you to move away. Otherwise, you can provoke a taboo and cause the appearance of ferocious creatures, putting everyone in danger. Jang was worried. Bullshit. I've already checked this place with my compass and there's nothing here. Or if there was, it's already gone, the old man said angrily, clenching his fists. However, he shouldn't have made such loud, confident statements. A black hand with razor-sharp red claws appeared right out of nowhere. And grabbing Master Lu, she took him with her into the pitch darkness. They started to appear again. Seeing the hand, one of yesterday's surviving guys shouted. And then black hands began to reach out to the rest of the group from all sides. They grabbed everyone, squeezing them until their bones crunched, thereby immobilizing the victims. And then one of them reached out to our hero. The young man folded his fingers and grinned. He was wondering how in such a miraculous way this evil spirit could defeat him and immediately doused the environment around him with divine lightning. As soon as the electric current passed through his hands, they seemed to wither, after which they left the young man alone. But Chin Tian was not going to give up just like that, so he gave chase. Or rather not he, but divine lightning. Our hero noticed long ago where the largest clot of dark energy was located and, accelerating his speed, rushed there. And it actually turned out to be a portal. And the young man jumped through it and landed on the lid of a wooden coffin. Now his lungs absorbed fresh air, and the sun's rays caressed him from the sky. Looking around Zhang from the story of two yesterday's survivors, he realized that this was the very special place they were talking about. Bai Qing was the first to throw the lid off her coffin after she woke up. What's going on? Where are we? A silent question was read on her face when her eyes got used to the light. Following her, the others began to wake up. Not understanding how they ended up in the coffins, and now confidently asserting that ghosts were indeed being introduced into this place. Or vampires. But among everyone there was still no Master Lu. Realizing this, the team began to search for him, but were inconsolable. Our hero did not lag behind them, but then a guess arose in his head. He approached the last unopened coffin and, jumping up, began to kick his feet as hard as he could. His efforts were not in vain, and the resulting noise woke up Xiang Chang, and he jerked up from the coffin painfully hitting his forehead. What is this bad smell of urine? Did you get scared and wet yourself? The assistants asked, covering their noses, helping the old man to stand up. Slander. As an immortal, I specially cultivated my virgin urine to resist evil spirits. This is on purpose. Master Liu justified himself, blushing before his eyes. Where are you going? Yun asked our hero, seeing him heading somewhere. Stay in place and don't move. Better yet lie down in a coffin. Once I deal with what lies ahead, you can leave this place," Ching Tian advised. Nonsense. Do you think you can solve all the problems here? It's not that I'm belittling you, it's just that you're still too young. This place is very mysterious. You better stay close to me and don't wander around, 
Xiang Cheng interrupted him, taking off his loincloth and squeezing it out of the urine while spreading a fetid odor. But Bai Qing wanted to play the role of a hero today. This lady will no longer lie in a coffin. No matter what spirits or demons are here, I will crush them all in front of an expert, she said, armed with a cannon from her mechanical suit. Do what you want. I'm leaving, Zhang said without paying attention to everyone else and moved forward. Madam, what should we do now? One of Yun's assistants became worried. Madam Huang Fu, since we are in this troubled place, why don't you get to the root of the problem? Sun Chan suggested, spinning the compass again. Besides, if they listen to this boy Zhang, then it turns out that they came to the gold mine in vain and return empty-handed. Okay, let's go have a look, Yun commanded. Meanwhile, our hero managed to get quite far from his group. Do you know where you are? This is hell. Welcome. Next, various forms of death await you all. A voice from the environment mocked. However, his threats did not make Chintian's heart flutter with fear. He was more annoyed when the creature giggled disgustingly. Then, he awakened his inner strength, with the help of which he identified the location of the vampire, grabbed him and tied him up. Then he threw it right at his feet. How did you find me? The ghoul did not understand. Little demon cultivator, a little demonic energy is not worth mentioning. Our hero explained in a nutshell, and using his abilities at a distance, he immobilized the vampire. This is hell, and you dare to kill the messenger of hell? Your sins are unforgivable, he finally cursed. For some time, our hero silently digested what he heard, after which he smiled. Hell? Even if it is not the real hell, even if it is the real nine hells, I Zheng Qing Tian will walk on them, he swore, and he lowered his hands, thereby breaking the binding bonds and the vampire fell to the ground. The demon king of hell is about to awaken and we are all his slaves. Ignorant people, the most painful death awaits you, the ghoul gloated. But his words did not matter to the young man since the demonic energy in this place was of very high quality. It was far superior to the aura of the ghost cultivator he had defeated in the cemetery, which could not have been better. Having killed the vampire, our hero sat in the lotus position on one of the nearby stone boulders and began to absorb demonic energy. After some time, a research group followed his trail. Madam Huang Fu, look into the distance this Zhang. One of the assistants told everyone. What are you doing here? Yun asked, coming closer. He must be too scared to move forward alone, deliberately waiting for us here, right? Zhang Chang guessed. Listen guys, try your luck again and turn back the way you came. The monsters here may be weaker, but they cannot be dealt with. Getting to his feet and brushing off his pants, Ching Tian asked again. I can't talk to you anymore. Ms. Huang Fu, this guy doesn't solve the problem, but continues to insist on your return. Your Huang Fu family must have already paid him for all this. Master Liu began to be indignant. But the words of our hero did not frighten the Qing, but rather stirred up interest. Let's go. If there really are zombies or monsters there, I want to see how strong they are, or how strong my gun is, she said. Zhang, this gold mine is very important to the Huang Fu family, and therefore I must resolve this issue and must go deep and find out what is happening. Yun objected. Unfortunately, however, our hero turned out to be right. Welcome to hell. Enjoy the different ways of death. Like a bolt from the blue, it flashed over people's heads. Who's here? Xiang Chang asked in a quiet voice with excitement. To begin with, you all must remain in place. Talking is prohibited. Those who do not obey will go to tongue-pulling hell. The voice from the sky continued to speak. Miss Yun, what is this? One of the assistants asked in shock, and he immediately regretted his words when something sharp cut his tongue and a stream of blood filled his mouth. Following this, thousands of knives began to pierce the young man's body as if from the inside, bringing unimaginable pain. Those around him watched his agony, barely controlling themselves so as not to scream in horror. But then the man, scratching his face with his nails until it bled, fell to the ground and gave up the ghost amid barely audible sighs. This time they are acting cunningly and have not revealed themselves, thought our hero, trying to find out the source of the dark energy clot. But in an instant the sky was filled with scarlet clouds, after which a voice from heaven said that now everyone can talk and move. However, first they should kneel down, and those who do not obey will go to the hell of the Knife Mountain. The first to fall to his knees was one of the Huang Fu family's assistants. What else could he do? Saiyan Chen, what should we do now? Yun asked the old man for advice. What ignorance? Sinister creatures dare to force my mistress to her knees. 
Then have the courage to come out and meet me face to face, said the Bai family confidant, at the same time putting on mechanical armor. In his gaze one could read the determination to incinerate anyone who dared to go against his mistress. He barely dared to go against the invisible, omnipresent enemy when huge, sharp iron flippers flew towards him, which, having overtaken the man, dismembered him into several pieces. One pierced his stomach, several others pierced his arms and legs. What the hell? What alloy are these swords made of? My armor is the best! Ching thought with horror, looking at her dead assistant. After the second team member died in the last five minutes, the remaining assistants realized that they had to obey orders, and in absolute silence they fell to their knees. Only our hero with Yun, Ching, and Master Liu still stood on their own two legs. Madam Huang Fu, we have no idea what it is, and therefore we cannot resist. So let's just kneel for now. Shang Chang suggested, not yet admitting defeat, after which he also fell to his knees. However, looking around, he saw Zhang standing next to him with his head held high. Guy, don't jump over your head. Can't you see that even the immortal I knelt down? What's the point of resisting? The old man thought out loud. That's right. Something strange is really happening here. It is better to be careful and prudent. Yun supported him. But our hero believed that there was just a bunch of non-entities gathered around them who could not get on the big stage. As soon as he said the last word, a hail of dozens of knives rained down in his direction. But the young man decided not to repel the attack, but simply dodged, jumping to the side. But one of the swords flew straight at his head. Putting his fingers forward, Chintian deftly grabbed the blade. And turning it 180 degrees with even stronger speed, he threw it back. The young man watched with pleasure after the blade, listening to the piercing whistle. Absurdity for you I am hell, Zhang said when the blade was out of sight. What should we do now? One of the assistants asked a rhetorical question. This kid is already doomed. We can't save him. That's all Sanchan said. Everyone go to the main house, which is located in front. Those who disobey will go to press stone hell. Ordered an omnipresent voice. Ching stood up with a jerk. Let's go, for now we can only go forward. She called on everyone. In addition, our hero has left the entire team far behind. After some time, the road that led to the main house led Zhang to a huge building, around which demonic energy was flying. Not bad, not bad. Our hero commented on the appearance of the building. After which, step by step, he climbed the stairs. There was a portal in the doorway, and as soon as the young man crossed the threshold, the door immediately slammed behind him. A long corridor opened in front of him, along the sides of which human bones were scattered, and at the end of the tunnel, the ceiling of which was supported by huge broken columns, another door could be seen. You ended up in the main house, forever caught in the cycle of rebirth. Repent and exchange forgiveness for your blood, said the omnipresent voice. Then, for my part, I will also give you a chance. Come out and meet your death, Chintian suggested in response, but then I heard footsteps behind me. This team caught up with him and stepped through the portal. Guys, come out first. I still have one more thing to do here, asked Zhang. Do you understand that you have created big problems? If you go alone, it will only get worse. Shaking his index finger from side to side, Xiang Chang began to lecture. Is there a way out here? Ching asked, not paying attention to the old man's complaints. Our hero pointed to the door ahead. However, he warned that he did not know whether she could get them out of here. After his words, everyone looked at the door through which they entered this house. If you don't leave now, it will be too late. Kintian continued to insist. Okay, I'll go out. This place is too creepy. Let's listen to Zhang. Let's get out of here. Yun agreed. Madam Huang Fu, this child is not afraid. Why should we be afraid? By the way, I also have a means of salvation. Master Liu objected, twirling his mustache on his finger. But how do you know which of these doors is the exit? Perhaps the door in front will lead us outside. However, we can't stay here, otherwise we'll stay in this hole forever. Ching began to reason. Meanwhile, the door behind them through which they entered the building, creaking with bolts, slowly closed. Another moment and it slammed shut, leaving everyone trembling in fear. However, not everything was so hopeless. A gap appeared in the door in front of them, through which light poured into the darkness. The guys were happy. Will they really be able to leave this strange place? But the door opened not to let them out, but to let someone into them. When the team saw their executioners, they got the impression that they were locked in a cage, left to be torn to pieces by wild animals. Or rather, a tiger, which had sharp centimeter-long claws, huge, sharply sharpened fangs, bone spikes on its back, and blood-stained eyes. Scratching the floor with their claws, the animals went out hunting. Those present froze in growing panic, 
not expecting to see such monsters in their company. Is this a grave tiger? Well, this place really breeds such sinister creatures. It looks like we will have a good harvest this time. Our hero thought, rubbing his hands contentedly, and the animals, arching their backs and stealthily, came closer and closer. No! Help! I want to get out! Open the door! I don't want to stay here! One of the assistants became hysterical, and running up to the door he began pounding on the iron steel as hard as he could. Well, he shouldn't have lost sight of the tigers. Sensing his fear, the animals made him their number one victim, and in two leaps they found themselves next to him and knocked him to the floor. The man, trying to somehow save his life, began to escape, but the tiger only dug its claws deeper into his body, and without hesitation he tore the man's throat out. After a few minutes he stopped showing any signs of life. Can we really not get out? Yun thought, barely holding back the tears in her eyes. Yes, I told you to leave, but you didn't listen. Now we have only two options. Our hero reassured her. The realization of this cruel truth took the girl's breath away. That's right. You only have two options. The first one is to die. And the second one is to vote for the one who dies instead of you. You decide. You have ten seconds to think. If you don't make a choice in ten seconds, you all die. Confirmed the omnipresent voice. All four began to look at each other tensely. What should we do? Yun asked our hero for advice again. Easy and simple. Kill the tigers, Ching Tian suggested. Things here are extremely strange and we don't know what they are. Even I am powerless. What should we do? Xiang Chang was worried. And the voice reminded them that they had three seconds left. And the tigers couldn't wait to get into someone's throat again. Let's vote! Without waiting for the cherished seconds to pass, Ching raised her hand. Since the situation has developed this way, they simply have no other choice to survive. Very good. I appreciate your self-knowledge. Now the four of you can vote on which of you should die. You have three whole minutes to make a decision. Either one of you dies, or all of you die. The omnipresent voice repeated the conditions. Now a game of survival began between the surviving four and none of them wanted to go to the world of the dead. Doesn't this force us to kill each other? Yun interrupted the silence. Xiang Cheng was the first to decide to make his choice. For the sake of safety, one of us must sacrifice himself. Kid, you have the lowest status here, and besides, you have attracted the attention of a formidable creature. Initially, you couldn't leave here alive, the old man suggested, patting our hero on the shoulder. And he promised that after the death of the young man, he would personally perform a ceremony to help his soul find peace. But Zhang, unlike Xiang Chang's expectations, had a different opinion, and raising his hand, slapped the old man in the face. Did he seriously hit me? Master Liu didn't understand, feeling his bruised cheek and getting to his feet. Weren't you the one who suggested voting? Then why are you breaking your own rules? That's why I vote for your death. Being darker than a cloud, our hero made his choice. Xiang Chang laughed hysterically. For me, Ms. Bai, Ms. Huang Fu, this guy doesn't know who he is, he's just crazy. Let's all vote for him and then let him die instead of us, the old man suggested again. After listening to him, Ching thought for a while and raised her hand. I vote for Master Lu. She made her choice. I didn't expect such a decision from Xiang Cheng. For him, it was equal to betrayal. The girl justified her choice by the fact that compared to this, as she put it, old rogue, she would rather trust the young man than him. Then Xiang Cheng rushed for Yun's support, because if she also votes for Zhang, then they will have a draw. Two against two. Five seconds left to make your choice. Five, four, three, said the omnipresent voice. Miss Huang Fu, vote for Zhang, the old man begged, almost falling to his knees. Sorry, but I trust Zhang more, so I vote for you. Yun finally made her choice. Her words cut like a knife through Master Liu's heart. And he, hopeful that he would never see sunlight again, began to cry like a child. Well, the voting results have been summed up. The dropout must now go die, summed up the omnipresent voice. As soon as he fell silent, the grave tigers broke free from the chain and with huge leaps ended up next to the old man. No! Help! Help, I ask you! Choking in his own blood, Xiang Chan shouted until he was hoarse, when three tigers tore his flesh to shreds. Watching the peculiar execution, the girls barely had enough strength to restrain themselves, as they felt sick. After a minute, the old man stopped moving and breathing. Well, your obedience is the guarantee of your life. There are three people left, two women and one man, and this man dared to offend me. So you both girls kill this man and you can leave here, otherwise all three will die. The voice explained the new rules of the game. His order was not to Yun's liking, because how could she kill her savior, who himself saved her from death? 
King was also not particularly eager to kill Qing Tian. But her life was more valuable to her, and, unlike Yun, she was ready to kill him. And therefore, without much hesitation, she put on her mechanical armor. What are you doing? You shouted as Qing pointed her cannon towards our hero. I don't want to remain imprisoned within these walls forever, and in order to survive I can only sacrifice Zhang. Qing answered, preparing cartridges. Don't you understand? These creatures are just teasing us, watching us kill each other and suffer. They will not spare any of us. I tried to reason with my friend Yun. If we don't kill Zhang, we will all die. Only by killing him will we at least gain time, Qing objected. And she added that she was giving 10 seconds for Yun to think so that she could join her. Our hero silently looked at the barrel of the gun, which was 15 centimeters from his face. For him it was not a weapon. Rather, it looked more like a thin straw through which boys blow paper balls. After which he absolutely calmly turned around and headed towards the doors ahead. Did I give you permission to move? Ching screamed as she pulled the trigger. But Zhang, tightly grasping the cannon, pushed it to the side, taking it away from him. And soon, under his onslaught, the iron armor crumbled into small parts. What? Ching stood in bewilderment, looking at her bare hand. You should leave while you have the opportunity. Turning over his shoulder, our hero muttered through his teeth. Under his gaze, Ching shrank, feeling the pressure. And while she was indignant at how Ching Tian dared to challenge her, the young man left her far behind, heading towards the door ahead. He already realized that their main enemy was not particularly terrible, and it would not be difficult for him to find him. Grave tigers, kill this upstart, ordered an omnipresent voice. Obeying his order, the animals immediately began to approach Zhang, licking their lips. Be careful, Yun shouted, fearing for the life of her savior. And so the tiger got ready, jumped up and sprang back on its hind legs, spreading its paws, and prepared to grab the victim in its deadly embrace. Our hero grabbed his muzzle and closed his mouth, after which he grabbed the animal by the throat, threw it over his shoulder and threw it into another corner of the hall. From such a throw and a broken artery, the tiger could barely breathe, and therefore did not move when he landed. What enormous power! Are there really people in our world who have such power? Ching was amazed, watching what was happening from the side. When the tigers saw that trouble had befallen their relative, they became more enraged than before, and both rushed towards Kintian. The young man smiled. It had been a long time since he had had so much fun, although in fact for him, it was just a warm-up. Using the power of the flame, he fried the animals on the fly. When they landed on the carpet, Zhang, with a confident gait, again walked towards the doors. He was very interested in what was behind them. I underestimated you, you killed my tigers. Now you can't even hope to get out of here, the ubiquitous voice gloated. Just hide, our hero advised him, touching the carved door. No matter how hard you try, the stone door here is made of a special stone and you won't be able to break it, answered the voice. Meanwhile, Ching, using the system, grew broken armor for herself and asked Zhang to step aside so that she could try to break the door herself, since at the moment they could only kill the monsters together. Ching Tian could not refuse her such a request. An electric discharge from a cannon was directed at the door. Subsequently, an explosion occurred. However, when the dust cleared, not a scratch remained on the door. What? Was she unharmed? Ching was surprised at the super strength of the door. Cold sweat appeared on her back. Is it really possible for them to just stay in this trap and die here? But she thought so only because she considered herself the strongest. And since she failed, then there is no point in trying for others. But our hero did not give up. Concentrating his strength and demonic energy in his fist, he hit the door. And with the first blow he managed to punch a hole the size of a man. He broke the stone door with one blow? Is his fist more powerful than my mechanical cannon? How is this even possible? Is he even human? Ching was puzzled, seeing how easily the young man dealt with the obstacle. Before going through the broken door, our hero waited until the last stones fell. Don't come in and wait for me here he finally said over his shoulder to the two girls. As he thought, this door was also a kind of energy portal that the owner could control. Finding himself in the room, Zhang saw an elderly man sitting on a mattress in front of him. While waiting for guests, he fiddled with his beard, either smoothing it or braiding small braids. And so, in appearance, he was no different from other elderly people. Well done, boy. You have come this far and passed my test successfully, I am pleased. In fact, I am immortal here and everything that happened before was a test for you. As a reward for passing the test, I am ready to take you on as a student. Are you ready to follow me along the path of immortality and strive for eternity? The old man suggested. 
What's the point of trying to confuse me with such cheap tricks now that I've come here? How can you use such tricks? Chintian accepted the offer with hostility. Until this moment the elderly man had been sitting with his eyes closed, and now, he suddenly opened them. The whites of his eyes were black, and the pupil itself glowed red. My demonic aura does not affect you. Are you a demon too? Since we are both dark entities then, I can teach you something. Let's live in peace, okay? He continued to persuade, but Zhang shook his head negatively from side to side. It was he who should have taken the old man as his student, and not vice versa. Then today I will kill you, the demon shouted. His fingernails immediately grew, and like hooks, reached out to the young man. But suddenly a huge three-headed troll with six arms rose up behind Kintian. Seeing such a monster the demon retreated, crawling back. Another moment, and he fell to his knees in front of our hero. Like the ghost cultivator in the cemetery, he did not understand where this frightening aura came from, and who exactly was hiding in the body of such a fragile and defenseless young man. I demand that you show yourself, John commanded. The old man resisted, but under the influence of Ching Tian, his true essence began to emerge. A little more and only clothes remained from the body of the elderly man, and in its place, twisting like a vine, stood something similar to a cannabis plant. Only it had several mouths, and between the leaves around the head there were thorns. The comedian bun is actually a monster, a piranha, our hero muttered a spell. Groaning heart-rendingly, the demonic plant stuck out its tongue, licking its lips. You overestimate your capabilities, our hero gloated, and controlling the movement of the troll, he grabbed the plant. No, please don't destroy my essence, the demon instantly calmed down and begged, but the troll squeezed the stem as hard as he could and threw it to the floor after which he nailed it from above several times with a hammer. When the death of the main enemy came, Ching Tian decided to take his reward for his destruction by absorbing demonic energy. For some time he was in complete harmony of soul and body. When he opened his two physical eyes, a third eye shone in his forehead. It turned out that the demonic energy of this plant was greater than our hero imagined. She allowed him to activate his magic eye ability. After some time, the flower transformed back into an old man. In the name of fellow practitioners of the dark arts, please spare my life, he prayed. Cultivation of the dark arts is the knowledge of the true essence of the universe. The courage to move forward and free oneself from worldly restrictions, and not to torture the weak and senselessly kill the innocent. Zhang taught him a dying lesson, and creatures like this old man have actually discredited the essence of the dark arts and there is no forgiveness for them. Opening his third eye, the young man looked at the old man, emitting deadly energy. Baby, just wait. If you kill me, someone will come for you. Looking into his eyes before his death, the former demon promised. But he didn't have time to say anything more because it was as if smoke began to dissolve in the air. Ching Tian watched his death absolutely calmly. He did not expect that on planet Earth there were such magical creatures as cannibal flowers. It seems that planet Earth is much more mysterious than he expected. When the old man's body finally turned into a mountain of ashes, Zhang put his hands in his pockets and walked back at a leisurely pace. Espers are mechanical armor, practitioners of the dark arts. The earth is much more interesting than my previous life, our hero thought along the way. While he was dealing with the enemy, Qing and Yun were worried about him. Zhang has been inside that door for so long. Is he still alive? The representative of the Bai family thought. If Zhang dared to go there, it means he is confident in himself. Besides, our hope of getting out is tied to him, so my dear, you better hope for the best, tried to cheer up my friend Yun. If I had taken the strongest sword with me to the Bai family, then we would not have been trapped here. Ching answered her. While she spoke, she did not hear anything, but Yun caught the sound of falling stones. And then, to the sound of her heart beating rapidly, Chintian appeared in the hole in the doorway. Are you okay? What's inside? The girls attacked him with questions. Zhang nodded to Yun to exit, saying it was time for them to leave here. This behavior hurt Qing pride. Ignore me? Do you think this is some kind of incredible expert? Don't you know that cultivation is now being eclipsed by experts? Looking after him, she was indignant. Finally, they left this terrible house and came to that strange place where they found themselves in coffins. Zhang, how do we get out of here? Yun asked. But our hero only smiled mysteriously and was the first to lie down in the coffin and the others followed his example. After which they again found themselves inside the mine, when they finally climbed up and exposed their faces to the sun's rays, they breathed a sigh of relief. Out of all ten, 
Only three survived. We finally got out, but the losses this time were heavy. Yoon summed up, squinting from the light. Guys, see you again. Ching said her final goodbyes and, using rocket engines in her mechanical armor, left the gold mine. The guys, barely able to stand on their feet from the rising wind near them, looked after her. This time you did a great service to our Huang Fu family. After I report this to grandfather, the Huang Fu family will definitely express their gratitude to you. Yun promised. After shaking hands, the guys reached the city, after which everyone went their own way. For example, our hero visited his university for the second time that day. Walking past the buildings of the educational institution, his attention was attracted by a young couple. The guy was trying to explain something to the girl, while she herself clearly did not want to listen to him. And Yunuo, you know what conditions I, Liu Ben, am in. Are you still thinking about it? Having caught up with the girl and grabbing her wrist, the guy tried to explain himself. His appearance was unremarkable, and in addition he wore an outdated model of glasses. I don't like you. Please stop bothering me, Yunuo repeated, withdrawing her hand for the umpteenth time that day. How is this possible? How can you not like me? Am I Liu Ben, an academic genius who receives scholarships every year? I am famous at the university. I am not just a scientist, but a genius. Not accepting refusal, the young man began to increase his worth. Leave me alone, and shouted. Suddenly, her admirer's eyes shone brighter than before. I understand. Although this is my first time in a relationship, as an academic genius, I have rich theoretical knowledge. I know that girls want to save face and hope that others will pursue them. But isn't that what I do? Just consider it done. In the end, the result will be the same. Be my girlfriend. The guy didn't give up. After such a prologue, An had no strength left to object in any way, and she needed a break, and therefore she allowed her classmate to continue chatting incessantly. I have not seen such shamelessness, even on the immortal continent where I once was. Our hero laughed in his heart while watching the drama. As he passed by the couple, Yunuo noticed him. You just got back, right? Leaving Ben, the girl rushed to Ching Tian. Our hero nodded affirmatively. However, Ben was not so delighted with his appearance, since he prevented him from achieving what he wanted. Let me introduce myself. I am Mu Ben, an academic genius. He was the first to greet, extending his hand. However, Jang silently looked him up and down without shaking his hand. Of course, Ben was a little puzzled by this fact, but he decided not to fall face down in the dirt. I know you. You are the one from whom Hu Tianhua stole his girlfriend, right? He decided to touch a sore spot. Hey, watch your words, and reprimanded him. Although I don't like people like Hu Tianhua, who uses his power to bully others, it is a fact that he stole Zhang's girlfriend. Ben repeated his words. Firstly, Xiaoren is not worthy of being Qin Tian's girl. And secondly, he has better options. Yunuo corrected him. Best options? Zhang is now famous for having his girlfriend stolen. Besides, who would continue to want to be his girlfriend at this university? Mu spread his hands, wanting to somehow get rid of the annoying admirer. Anne, putting as much confidence and fortitude into her voice as possible, shouted with all her strength, I! What followed was a silent scene, as both of the guys were shocked from their toes to the top of their heads. As long as Zhang wants, I will be his girlfriend. Yunuo announced, coming close to our hero and hugging him by the hand, while our hero didn't even know how to react to this. Do you even understand what you're doing? Let him go now! Ben demanded, unable to watch his beloved being taken away from him. What I do does not concern you, so get out of here! And repeated, pressing herself tighter to the man's shoulder. Well, Mu was indeed right. He had many theories in all areas of life, but no practice, and instead of trying to resolve the situation peacefully, he became more aggressive. Jang, be reasonable and get out of here. You don't deserve her. He shouted, poking his finger into our hero's chest. But his hysteria made no impression. We're leaving, Yunuo said, nodding. Okay, the girl agreed. And like an obedient sheep hugging the young man, she followed him. But Ben was not going to give up. He ran ahead and blocked the guy's way. You're already tired. You're bothering your eyes. Get out of my way. As if swatting away an annoying fly, Kintian moved him out of the way. Swallowing tears of resentment and hatred, the humiliated Ben, stretched out on the path, watched the couple leave. Abomination! I, a member of the generation of learning gods, have never suffered such humiliation. Zhang, I will definitely defeat you and get my Yunuo back. Ben swore from himself, 
Meanwhile, An and Qing Tian left the park and walked around the university grounds. Be careful with Hu Tianhua. I heard that he came back. With his character, he will definitely come for you. Yunuo warned just in case. No problem. If he comes, he will bring trouble upon himself. Our hero answered confidently. The surrounding students looked at them in surprise because they were made from different dough and did not understand Yunuo's choice. Passing by the dormitory, Zhang became interested in a group of people. Give me a chance, X-Men Society, some guy shouted. I want to join the X-Men Society, asked a group of girls standing on their tiptoes. Coming closer, our hero saw a brunette young man with a tousled hedgehog on his head, standing in the center in dark clothes. Behind him, dressed in mechanical armor, stood several more students who were already members of human society. Everyone line up! Our society recruits only the best, richest students! The boy with the hedgehog commanded. I don't know about you, but the X-Men Society is the hottest club in school without a doubt. After all, who doesn't strive to wear armor and become an expert? But the catch is that this society only accepts those who have money. Yunuo reasoned, watching what was happening from the side. Our hero was of the same opinion with her. While the X-Men Society was wildly popular, the martial arts club at Donglin University stopped adding new members to its ranks a long time ago. I heard that Hu Tianhua is the vice president of the Society of People Wearing Mechanical Armor. Everyone flocks there, but no one wants to join our club, complained Bao Fu, the president of the martial arts club, watching the growing crowd of his opponent. Well, who studies martial arts these days? With the advent of mechanical armor and superpowers, traditional martial arts fell into decline. Vice President Ding Mengui answered him without raising his head from the magazine. Despite the inherent swelling of her body, she had a rather cute face. Black hair framed pouting lips and blue eyes. What can we do? If the martial arts club fails to recruit enough members, we will lose our club status. Let's continue to criticize Fu's fate. If all else fails, I will seduce one guy to join. The martial arts club must not be disbanded. Despite everything, Megi promised to gather her strength. Her naive confidence made Fu laugh. Seduction? You're kidding. Let's forget about it. I'm afraid that if I try to seduce anyone, I will only scare people away. He laughed. And just at that moment, our hero and Yunuo walked past the registration point for new participants in the martial arts club chatting. Seeing the couple, Megi immediately jumped up from her chair and handed the guys two flyers. Hey, handsome miss, want to join the martial arts club? Please read the information first. She chattered. No thank you, but we will not join any clubs. And waved her hands, and Sean did not deign to answer anything at all. Okay, okay, Dean said smiling in response to the refusal. Although I must admit she was disappointed again. Our hero and his hired girlfriend had not gone far when they again witnessed another discord. Come on, join the martial arts club? How can you be so desperate? The guy in the gray suit tried to convince his friend. Isn't he good? Build strength and stay healthy. His friend in sweatpants was indignant. But the young man in the suit believed that building strength and staying healthy was just cheating in traditional martial arts. In addition, they are now suggesting superpowers and mechanical armor. And according to him, only those who are crazy will study traditional martial arts, and grabbed his comrade by the hand and led him away. Hey, stop! Meiguai shouted after them. What do you want? The guy in the jacket turned around in response to the call. Repeat, who are you calling scammers? Dean made a claim to him. Do you have any problems? No one from the university has yet joined the martial arts club in all this time. If this is not a scam, then what? The guy answered, putting his hands in his pockets. His brazen straightforwardness angered Maggie. Do you want to receive it? She asked, coming closer. Let's say, so what now? Don't pay attention to her clenched fists, the guy quipped. However, instead of answering, the girl hit him in the chest, trying not to hit his solar plexus. Not expecting such a strong blow, the young man could not stand on his feet. Merzaevka, dare to hit me? Are you really tired of living? Looking at the menacing figure hanging over him, he was indignant. However, I had no intention of falling face down in the dirt. Now I will teach you a lesson in front of everyone, he threatened, putting on his mechanical armor. At this time, students began to run to the beginning of the duel. Let everyone know that your martial arts club is just a bunch of scammers, the guy said clenching and unclenching his fist, and making a lunge forward, Megi attacked. But the girl was no slouch and fearlessly put up her fist. 
However, the enemy turned out to be much stronger, and her attempt to repel the attack was inconsolable. Are you okay? Fu became worried, running up to his friend who was sprawled on the tile. I'm fine, Maggie answered. With the help of the martial arts club president, she stood up, rubbing her bruised shoulder. You two can attack me together, two trash martial arts practitioners. An upstart in mechanical armor challenged Bao to a duel. Of course, Fu couldn't miss this chance and ran towards him. But before he could attack, he received a blow to the jaw. Today, in front of everyone, admit your mistake. Admit that practicing martial arts is a deception. It is rubbish, and I will let you go, suggested the enemy. Of course, the representatives of the martial arts club did not agree to this, and Mei Gi, forgetting about the pain in her shoulder, ran and jumped up to the guy to hit. But this time her attack was unsuccessful. The students who watched the duel were amazed by his reaction. What? Chuan is no match for a fur armor sword that can crush tranquilizers with one finger, but this is not the same level. They admired. Well, do you admit defeat to your club? Wu gloated, looking down on the guys. First, Mei Gui cleared her throat. I admit that. She began to speak, gritting her teeth. This is more like the truth. Hu laughed, interrupting the girl. I admit that I am your grandmother. Out of nowhere, Dean blurted out. Her confession finally knocked Chuan out of himself. Jumping up to the girl, he swung. Maggie prepared to face, if not death, then to accept the fact that she would have a broken arm or leg. But surprisingly, the surrounding students did not sympathize with her. Today's battle has caused the martial arts club to become a laughing stock in the university. Next, this club must be disbanded. They came to the same conclusion, but here everything happened in slow motion. Recovering himself, Fu ran up and stood between Din and the upstart in mechanical armor, repelling the attack. The onlookers gathered around couldn't believe their eyes as Bao blocked Wu's power. Our hero was also surprised. Demon spirit physique? Are there really people on Earth with a special physique? He thought. I think that such behavior is too much even for the X-Men Club. Yunuo was indignant. Even if you managed and did not let the electric current pass, then you will not cope with this. And I will ensure that the martial arts club becomes closed today. Wu shouted. Do you really think that you have the last word? Fu said sarcastically. And the two guys grappled in a battle of confrontation between two forces, technology and fortitude. However, Bai was not so trained and therefore lost. Brat. Now I'll teach you a lesson. Promise Wu. Now two people ran to the president of the martial arts club. The first was Maiga to help a friend, and the second was Anne, who did not know basic ethical standards. Fu tried to tense his muscles so that the crushing blow would not smash him to the ground. But then our hero stood in Chuan's way, preventing him from moving forward. Who are you anyway? Wu asked without lowering his hands. I have business with this guy named Bai Fu, Zhang explained briefly. Who do you think you are? Get lost! Chuan shouted, and put maximum effort into his outstretched hand, because he felt that there was a strong opponent in front of him. But this did not help him. Coming closer, Ching Tian twisted his arm, and in surprise the guy staggered and fell to the ground. He did not expect that some cultivator would be able to defeat him, the owner of mechanical armor. He only repelled my attack, our battle is not over. Chuan encouraged himself, raising his hand. I told you to leave, our hero repeated, throwing him back several meters. This man, also from the martial arts Bakuga, is impressive for the first years to admire. Most likely not, since there are only two members in the martial arts club. Others objected. Hey, aren't you surprised by the fact that this guy looks familiar? Like the same Jean who was thrown by all the Yuran? The third one was surprised. But the strong enemy Chuan was not afraid. He was going to continue to fight until the last. But then one young man emerged from the crowd of students. He was dressed immaculately, tastefully and neatly. Enough! He shouted. Chuan didn't expect Vice President Lin to appear here. Put away the rocket launcher. This is a university, so don't cause problems for the X-Men Club. The Vice President asked in a commanding tone. Forgive me, but this guy is looking for trouble. I can't let the X-Men Club lose face. I have to teach him a lesson. Wu explained the situation. I repeat once again, put away the gun. You don't need heavy weapons to deal with a loser. Repeated the Vice President. And turning to our hero, he asked whether he was really the same Zhang, about whom there were so many rumors. Ching Tian nodded affirmatively. I'm Lily's boyfriend. She and your ex are best friends. You know that, right? Asked the vice president. He had barely started talking about his two best friends when they announced right then and there. Lin Hai, what's going on here? Lily approached and demanded an explanation. And only when Xiaoren came closer did she notice our hero. 
Shang, are you causing trouble again? She was surprised. But what about? He is an ordinary student with no status or background, always looking for trouble. I really don't know what he's thinking. Lily scoffed, hugging her lover. Zhang, I'm giving you one chance to apologize. Hai suggested in a calm tone. Do you deserve it? Ching Tian asked in response. What did you say? The X-Men community is no joke at this university. Do you think we served it or not? Hai responded instantly to the joke, donning mechanical armor. This is our problem, and student Zhang has nothing to do with it. The president of the martial arts club tried to protect his savior by settling the situation. But their words had no effect on Lin, and he warned that if they didn't want problems, then the two of them should just leave. Well, the guys were not so easy to scare. Attack! Fu shouted, getting into a fighting stance. Hai rolled his eyes. He was irritated by their selflessness, and he was the first to attack. I can't withstand his blows, thought Bai, barely dodging the attacker's hand. Then our hero decided to join the battle, thereby increasing his authority with the help of his abilities. And he pointed his hand towards Fu and gave him a piece of his demonic energy. And as soon as he did this, Bao suddenly felt a surge of strength. When Hai attacked him once again, he decided not to dodge the blow, but withstood it steadfastly. After which he struck a screwdriver, which threw the vice president of the X-Men society quite far away. The surrounding students held their breath and could not understand what had just happened and how it was possible to throw away a man in mechanical armor. Fu asked himself the same question as he looked at his hands in surprise. I was right. This guy's physique is truly extraordinary. Our hero agreed with his earlier conclusion. How are you feeling? Meigi ran up to her friend and became worried. Nothing at all. Why did I suddenly become so powerful? Do you think I have awakened some special ability or maybe I have a golden finger or something like that? Fu joked. And putting his hands on his hips, he began to shout, System! System! Are you here? Like, maybe he was reborn and is now some kind of manga protagonist. Hey, stop dreaming. Dean got angry and gave him a slap on the head so that Fu would come down to earth. Then she said that that guy was very similar to Zhang, and most likely this is the case. My dear, are you okay? Lily hurried to her lover. Okay, I was careless and let them think they could beat me, Hai answered, getting to his feet. When Lily made sure that everything was fine with him, she looked at the participants of the fight club and Zhang standing behind them. Darling, defeat these clowns. You are the best. And if you can, today I will show you some techniques, she asked, standing in a position favorable to her body, revealing her most intimate areas. Looking at her, Lin began to lustfully swallow his saliva. Martial arts club trash, you really pissed me off. Let's see if you can handle my blow, he thought. Shang, help me, Fu pleaded when the enemy got too close. Don't panic like that, our hero encouraged him, filling the guy with his energy. And when it seemed that Hai dealt him a crushing blow that should have killed him, nothing happened. Moreover, he himself was thrown back by the shockwave. He had to make a lot of effort so that he would not be thrown too far. How is this even possible? He didn't understand. What's going on? Why was my boyfriend able to lose to these weaklings? Lily couldn't find a place for herself. Just a little more and Lin gave up, returning to his human form. Okay, let's go, nodded our hero Yunuo, who again did not hesitate to take his hand. Once again in the past two days, Xiaoren was defeated. What infuriated her most was the fact that she was no longer interesting to her most ardent admirer. Why has Zhang changed so much lately? Does he still remain the same? However, no matter how you change, you will still remain the one I need. You are nothing without me. She thought, after the leaving couple. Sorry, wait a minute. Fu called out to our hero. Ching Tian waited until the vice president and president of the martial arts club ran up to them, after which the guys fell to one knee with their heads bowed. Thank you for your help, hero. Please accept our greetings. Bao thanked. Ching Tian slapped his forehead. And where did you learn this? He asked. From television dramas. Isn't that what everyone does? Zhang, thanks to your help, the martial arts club was not closed. Fu thanked again. Moreover, they had a request for him. They wanted Ching Tian to join the martial arts club. I am not interested in such things. Our hero refused. Zhang, if you join the martial arts club, we will make you president. Bao promised. You haven't joined any other club yet, right? And all new students are required to join a club, and instead of joining others, why not join us? Then your skills will not be in vain. Megui supported the elder. Is this true? Asked Ching Tian. Yes, new students must join at least one club as a minimum. Yunuo confirmed. Okay, since I don't have any special options, I'll join. Our hero agreed. 
but in return, he wanted to ask for a favor in which Bai should help him. No problem, at least ten things to do. Fu was happy. Our hero spent the rest of the day in the company of Anne. The sakura blossomed wonderfully, and the light breeze spread a sweet aroma. Okay, it's late. I have to go back to the dorm. The girl said goodbye. Her words brought melancholy memories to Chintian. He should also check his dorm. Since he returned, he hasn't been there yet. After walking a few steps, Yunuo turned around. I'm very glad that we spent time together today, she said finally. And turning away so that Zhang would not see her reddened face, she ran away. Our hero watched silently, counting how many steps she walked. In his previous life, if he remembered correctly, Anyunuo had an accident and became a vegetable before graduating from university. Just at that time, Hu Tianhua framed Qin Tian, and his whole life was miserable. Although he was sad to hear about An's accident, he couldn't help it. But now he is strong and not a coward. Nevertheless, in this life, he will definitely make sure that this kind girl who stood up for him has a good ending. After walking several blocks and crossing several streets, Zhang crossed the entrance threshold of the men's dormitory. Standing in front of the door of his room, he thought. Now will he be met by those same people or someone else? Suddenly the door opened in front of his nose. Zhang? The guy standing behind the door with glasses and a basin filled with dirty laundry was surprised. You're back! He was delighted. This guy's name was Jun Yongkai. Although he was a little timid and weak by nature, he was the best friend of our hero in his past life. In the most difficult times, it was he who always tried to help him. Where have you been all this time? They say that you and Xiaoran broke up again, and as always, Hu Tanhua is causing problems. Don't let it get the better of you. Zhang grabbed the hand and dragged him into the room. Yunkai chattered. You see, there are always a lot of fish in the sea, and you can find another one if it doesn't work out. He continued to reassure his best friend. But then a sneaker flew into his face, which belonged to their mutual friend and dorm roommate Feng Ge. You two, be quiet! I can't sleep because of you, the blonde shouted. Sorry, please, I'll be quieter. Yunkai admitted his guilt. Ji scratched his head and sat on the bed with his legs dangling. Give me the slipper, he asked in a commanding tone. Yes, now, Yunkai immediately responded, and running up to the sneaker, he bent down to pick it up. Do not do that, our hero stopped him. 